Broadcasting live from the Treehouse in Phoenix, Arizona. It's Not Conscious with Mark Poles and Chris Woodsy Peralta from the home offices in Gilbert, Arizona. Welcome, sir. Sir, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How about Bienvenidos. Happy Christmas, Merry Boxing Day, all that good oh, stuff. Oh, yes. Today all is the 27th. of the Boxing Days. It is the 27th December. of December. December 27th, 2020. Yes. COVID going nasty. Tear, <laughs> tears in UK. Tears and tears. Tier one, two, three, four. Oh, and tears. tears. I like, was like, exactly. Oh, those Both. tears. Tears. Two tears. And tears. And allegedly those numbers are ramping up, sir. Uh, but I, okay. We're we're between uh obviously we're boxing. Twix the day. hedges. We are Twix the Hedges. Twix Christmas and New Ooh. Year's. This one is a knocked conscious. Yes, it is. So this one's serious. Serial. What's it about, sir? What's the title of this one? You Genics. And me genics. All of our All genics. the genics. Yes. It's funny, it's eugenics, but there's an E at the front. Yeah. It's like pa Philadelphia. It is, but it's kinda like the European Union Genics. Yes. The e EU Genics. Genics. Yeah. Which is interesting. It totally is. Case. This was a documentary that I came across on PBS like a year ago. And I found it really interesting. And I had no idea about it. And then I put it on the list of things that we might talk about. And then uh, we both rewatched it and we psycho check mark took five pages of notes or something ridiculous like that. And we're going to discuss the uh, pros and cons of eugenics and what it is and how it became a global phenomenon so to speak yeah. rise and fall of and because it was even more like eugenics was interesting back then because they didn't have the technology we have now now it's even eugenics is a even a different conversation than it was then well it's scarier now yeah because back then it was just sterilization right so we'll talk well, about all that but it was basically in a way yeah basically but we think you're good don't breed with that guy who's bad, but you don't know what comes across. Now with CRISPR and all that stuff, we'll we'll definitely right. get into that. So I looked it up because I'm like halfway through the documentary, which is less than two hours on PBS. It's free. Um, well, first of all, it's called The American Experience is the name of the show on PBS. And then Eugenics Crusade is the name of the episode. Episode uh, season 30. I believe it's episode 11. That is correct, sir. I think that's what it was. About halfway through, I thought, okay, what is that? What exactly does eugenics mean? What's the definition in English? Because we did, they did tell what's the definition in Greek, I think, which we'll get to that. But do you, are you okay if I read the definition Absolutely. In, in English? That's, that's a great start. The science of improving a human population by controlled breeding to increase the occurrence of desirable, heritable characteristics. Developed largely by Francis Galton, who we will talk about, as a method of improving the human race. Yes. The science of improving a human population by controlled breeding. Yep. I think it's expanded, though. I really do believe that, that number, that's expanded because now it's genetic manipulation in vitro and all that, where they didn't have that as, you know, in the 30s. What, what does in vitro have to do with eugenics? Well, it's about picking out, you know, you can pick the egg that doesn't have, remember they talk, even just, remember our podcast about the first cousin marriages? Yeah. They can, they can do a blood test ahead of time oh. to see if things cross over and there are in vitro, you can remove certain cancers in the, in the embryo, stage, embryonic stage before you even do the, the implanting of the, of, or the the fertilization of the okay. egg. Okay, I forgot all about that so, part of of that. Yeah, with yes. DNA splicing and everything right. like that. Now, right, right, right. We talked about CRISPR with the with the Chinese twins. Yes. Right? So that'll come up, but okay, I feel like on. eugenics is all of that. So what is CRISPR? Well, CRISPR. We'll we'll get into CRISPR later. I, well, we'll you talk can't about you can't oh. throw the goddamn term around, okay, bro. And then somebody because I don't CRISPR is a gene editing tool, splicing used by biochemists and whatnot to remove and add DNA to strain current, you know, strands of DNA. And uh, I think I asked you this question a while ago. Is that what that movie Gattaca is about? Yeah, we talked about Gattaca, and I think we were going to talk about that later as well we were? with okay. that CRISPR thing. The whole thing, we'll get into exactly what all that is. Uh, I can give you a quick, simplified definition. But basically, the thing is, is eugenics just, it's it's about birth now, but now it's beyond because we can do it outside the body, 
right? I mean, we can do some things outside the body that weren't just you can't have kids or can have kids, right? Because that's how it started. So are you talking about like body modification? Well, no, what I was are just you talking, talking about, about like outside about, of the body. Well, I'm saying because of in vitro fertilization, you can take an egg. Oh, okay. And okay, manipulate okay, okay, it okay. and then put it into something. It's okay. not just done randomly because even even though you have good stocks per se, and we'll talk about all how they got like the good breeding and whatnot, even with good breeding, you still have irregularities because you it's not a hundred percent, right? It's yeah. just a lower percentage of right. or a higher percentage yes. of but depending yes. on what yes. you know, intelligence, look you know, looks, all of those okay. personality okay. types and traits, right? Yeah. So anyway, CRISPR design tool. It's a gene knockout design tool. Oh, that sounds great. Oh. Yeah, you can just you can it simplifies gRNA design. Ooh, <laughs> you can design RNAs to guide. Uh, what about like Wranglers and Levi's? Oh and yeah, those. Well, those are delicious, and they look great. The five hundred ones, the button <laughs> fly, only the button fly. Um, so let's. I apologize. I've tangented already way too much. Let's get back to eug eugenics. Okay, specifically what it was about. Okay. How did the documentary start? Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to set the timeline because I'm psycho. So it starts uh, with the end. <laughs> well, okay. E eugenics basically started in 1902 and ran through the 1930s, through the Depression. Um, so everyone has a, a an idea of the timeline of, of when it transpired and when it became popular culture I, and i had no idea that it was even a thing even a thing in america and a big thing in america but to your point it started in the show started in 1934 in san francisco where a what do you want to call her um she was an elitist she was a well-to-do she was a grand the great granddaughter of the guy who invented the first steam locomotive the okay. tom thumb so uh, her name was Ann Cooper Hewitt. Yes. And she was a great grandson of P is Peter Hewitt or something like that. And anyway, he, he basically, they were well to do. They were well off. But, and so she was, she wasn't like a movie star or, but she was, she was like, just rich. Right. But she was born into wealth. Correct. She was a young lady in her thirties, right? Yes. She, uh, no kids, never married. Um, at this time, no. Yeah. At that point. Correct. Uh, and her mom, she went into the hospital for an appendicitis, right? Appendectomy. Yeah. She came out of the hospital and later learned that she had been made sterile. Yeah, a section of her fallopian tubes were removed, allegedly. And that was August 18th, 1934. 1934. There you go. So in to the, your point, yeah. basically the middle of the depression in she, Frisco. She, she, was, she was deemed, or she was called the sterilized heiress. And then she sued her mother and the surgeons for $500,000 in 1936, which I think I read something equivalent to like $9 million. That's today. a whole lot of money, dude. But that might have been 10 years ago, article. So it might be even more right, than that. Right. But yeah. $500,000 in 1936 dollars. That's a lot. Yeah. Holy mackerel. That is a crap ton. And basically, she sued her mother and the two surgeons who were in the operation, who performed the operation. So why did her mother want her to be sterilized? Well, that's where it gets a little um, gray. What were her mother's motives? Right. She claims she did what she did for society's sake. She said she claimed that her daughter was what's called feeble minded, which what we probably call some kind of mental challenges nowadays. Uh, feeble minded is a lower IQ or lower intelligence, I guess. They didn't really have IQ at the time. So lower intelligence. Um, and they, um, yeah, so she, she claimed that her daughter was feeble minded and that what she did was for society's sake. So she couldn't bring a lesser human into this world. And it was legal because the state at the time had had a law uh, allowing for sterilization for feeble mindedness, which is terrifying, scary. And we'll get into how that all happened. And once again, isn't it always like the initial idea of a better society is always a great start, but yeah. then who deems what's better? Right. And I mean, there's so many questions that come up and these will come up as we talk about this. And there was a lot of, they, they interviewed a lot of doctors and historians and writers and people that appeared smart 
and they said, yeah, it's a great idea, but the underbelly of it is, is fear and hate. And the fact that the elites were the ones who were deciding what was acceptable. That's right. so that's a problem. Well, right. I, from my perception, that's a problem. Well then, and this is the controversy on this particular, with this particular person, it'll come full circle. Do we want to talk about it at the end or do we want to just get bang out the whole story and then talk about the, the middle part where it basically, yeah, let's just finish. I'm, okay, I'm of finish. the opinion that we just finished the story. Yeah. So let's finish this. So basically um, what happened was there was a thought though, that in the gentleman's will, her father's will, the wife's or the mother's husband Without children, she does not get the fortune. And and Cooper Hewitt would not get the fortune of the family if she did not have children. Right. If so she, it would go to the it mom. It would then go to the mother. So that's that was the mom's motive. So they're not certain, right? Because she to this, you know, to that time claimed that it wasn't it was because of her daughter's feeble mindedness and that it was legal that you could sterilize feeble minded people at the time in nineteen thirty four when it happened. However, it would make sense to me that if I knew the will I, and I was greedy and I was a human, just like everyone else, I would, right. I'd probably do the same thing. Like it's legal. Just say that she feeble minded and all that. So what did you find interesting about how they determined her to be feeble minded? Do you remember that? The, uh, I, what I do recall was that the defense for the doctor said that she would be a bad mom. That's it. Did, right. Did, but I, did I miss something? Well, remember they administered like an intelligence test? Oh, yes. Like 20 minutes before they actually put her in the thing. Yes. So it, it just seemed like dumped on her. And she's yes. like, why are you asking me these questions? Right. They asked her very challenging questions like, what river dumps into Lake blah, 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 in the middle of nowhere that no one's ever heard of? Or what's the longest while river in the United States? she's in excruciating pain waiting to have her appendix removed. Right. So that's... That's pretty messed up. That like, uh, no one knows the answer to that question. Not even the smartest dude on Jeopardy knows that shit. So, yes, okay, now I do remember that. Yeah. So, I, and I think that was the setup, right? That's oh. how they. That's how they determined her feeble mindedness was through this weird intelligence. But go ahead. Yeah. She was fluent in three languages. Yes. So, how can you be labeled as well? Feeble minded was one of several terms they used for lesser intelligence. How can you be labeled as lesser intelligence if you've mastered three languages? Yeah. That seems ridiculous. It was pretty crazy. So anyway, um, that's w what that was all about, right? So that's the whole story about this one woman who was sterilized. So the question is, was it really because this feeble mindedness that they claim? To me, to your point, if I were to put money on it if i were to put a bet on it yeah. i would bet that she was doing it so that she could have the fortune of her of her husband for after he passed. Uh, yeah it's sad but you're you're i would agree that she that is used correct. she used the law the law in her favor yeah. as a as a you know not a loophole because it was clearly written no in not a loophole at all i mean that is that and then the, the the judge after six days threw the court out of threw the case out of court because the law states that you can sterilize somebody. Right. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, they're just like the law is the law. And that that wasn't that long ago. Nineteen thirty four is less than a hundred years ago. That's not in in the time span of humanity, that's not that long ago. We have um full vehicles that are on production assembly lines at that point already. Yeah. We've got Tanks airplanes. Shit. We've got airplanes. Yes. We've got basically every, yeah, we've modernized it more now. We had reciprocal engines back then, but back then we have everything almost now other than social media, internet, possibly. Well, we didn't we have computers, but we had phones. Right. We didn't have computers in, in, right. the, in the traditional sense, but we had telephones. Yeah. We had telegraphs. We had flight. We yeah. had, we had mass transit. In the or, or well, yeah. at least trains for sure. Well, trains, but also cars as well, right? Oh, steam, right, right, steam right, right, engine, right. Yeah, yeah, Everything yeah, yeah. was big. So we we're industrialized at that point. Oh, very much so. Yeah, I mean, this is in the middle of the depression. Right, right at the right at the at the depression there. So we're yeah, and so eugenics was here about um, controlling human reproduction. Right, it was a scientific solution for social problems. Um, it was like a combination of hope on one side and fear and hate on the other. You actually mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on all that? 
I think that's absolutely correct. That the idea that, hey, the the original idea was to if we if the if the, the original gentleman's idea, Francis Galton, is that correct? Yes, Galton, I think Galton, is how they say the same thing, Galton me, Galton. Out of uh, Long Island, New York, his original idea was if we can have somehow determine the hereditary traits of people and if those traits are bad alcoholism criminality negative things and those people don't procreate but the people that are stronger and smarter they do procreate we can create a better society well is that a good idea or not it it doesn't seem bad All right i don't know that's the thing is a concept better humans like they said better babies was one of the big yeah statements. right like ba making better babies like who doesn't want better babies right. who Health, doesn't want they a said healthy, healthier right. who doesn't right, want a healthier right. society yeah right and so those those are the things um we'll get into the philosophies of that and that's where you know where the contradictions come in right yes but um one of the things i found early on that they talked about it didn't start with nazi germany whenever you hear eugenics a lot of people tied it to nazi germany that was very interesting because Hitler had the Aryan nation, right? Remember right. Blonde hair, blue but eye. But I never. But you didn't even know. About I, it I mean, I obviously knew it. the Aryan race and Hitler's uh, attempt, uh, right, obvious pure race. attempt to yeah. make a master race, and you know yeah. that the term master race was coined by Hitler, right? right? But I didn't know that's what eugenics was. Right. I had no idea. I never heard the term eugenics until I watched that two-hour special. You know, what I mean, that's so. But you're right. If you had heard eugenics, many people did tie it to Nazi Germany. Yeah, because it was a whole mass racing. You didn't think anything about the Americans doing anything no, of the sort. Not at all. Nothing of the sort. No. Right? But it wasn't even a fringe idea in the 30s, the mid-30s. It had already taken, to your point, 1902 is when it started. 1910 is when it really took off. Right. Uh, with uh, Davenport and those other guys, right? So um, it was a utopian idea making better people. Like that, that was the whole thing. It was about having healthy children, stronger society, you know? Um, the thing is some pretty horrific things were done in that name, right? In the name of eugenics, it's kind of, it's funny cause they talk about it later as it being like a religion, right? Yeah. And one guy felt like, what's his name? The, the second in command guy thought he was Laughlin like, Laughlin guy, Harry yes, Laughlin. Correct. He, he was like an evangelist. Yeah. And that was, I was like, oh, that's not good. Yeah, he's selling his idea. Right. <sighs> yeah, it, the idea should kind of sell itself. So to your point, fall 1902, Charles Benedict Davenport, he's 36, Harvard, meeting with Sir Francis Galton, in, and he was in his 80s at the time, in England, I believe he went on oh, a trip. Oh, right, 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 right. And his motto, this Galton guy's motto, whenever you can, count. I think that's pretty smart. He was a numbers he, guy. Yeah, he was just. And, and he was about stats, right? It was all, it could all be written down and created at that point. Um, he created weather, weather maps, fingerprinting um, for finding people. That was pretty cool. I thought that was an interesting thing. About the dude started Francis fingerprinting. Gold. Yeah. That's crazy. For like, you know, criminality or to, to identify fingerprints, right? And then also, uh, he also had the parameters for the perfect cup of tea. A spot of tea, was it? And that, he was, um, Related to Darwin. Darwin, thank yes, you. Yes, he was Blech. the half cousin of Charles Darwin. So it did seem like these families of, I mean, smart they, people. They're generally white people at this point. They're all in Europe, oh. so it's pretty much white people. But the the better offs. The higher to do's are all seem to be related in some weird way, right? This Galton guy was able to have his university and be super smart, and he happens to be the half cousin of of Darwin. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Once again, it kind of goes in the family and how important family lineage uh, was was definitely at that point. It's still important now nowadays, but really back then, it just kind of set you for life or didn't in a weird way. So you're saying that it gave those two guys the ability to do research and. Yeah. And it, it set it them up to certainly afforded them better opportunities than some guy, you know, that's a Thatcher, Thatcher's son, William Thatcher, like a Thatcher's son, <laughs> like in not, not tail. Um, so, uh, created weather maps and then Galton's theory, right. Was talent 
or intelligence seem to run in certain families. If we get people with high quote unquote talent to make mate with each other and prevent people with low talent from mating each other in a few generations, we'd create a race of supermen. And that was kind of the thought was okay. We get (laughs) just on its face on that alone. What are your thoughts on that? I'm a terrible person, dude. I'm an, I'm just going to spit it out. Uh, it, let's say that actually happens, okay? In, in the utopian idea of that, let's say that actually does happen, that in two to three generations that actually occurs, no one is going to want to take the trash out. No one's going to want to pick strawberries as my father threatened that I would do if I didn't study. And that's... Everyone's going to be, oh, I'm smart. I don't have to do that shit. Well, uh, uh, um. There's always someone on the hind tit of the teat or the back, the, the back teat. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yes. There has but to But if be. you create a race of super people, you're going to have everyone's super people, but the lower super people are the ones that are going to do those jobs. And, and I understand that's maybe a topic that we shouldn't discuss no, uh, it needs to be discussed. Um, uh, for sure. So to your point, um, yeah, but even beyond that, like on, it, on its face, though, if just just that concept of don't have lessers breeding, <laughs> it doesn't sound like a bad idea. And I found like I feel like a horrible human being for saying that I'd want to avoid that as much as possible. Or at least breed maybe a lower talent with a higher talent, like and even it out or something. You know what I mean? Like if, yeah. But once again, you'd have to deem what talent is. Okay, so and let what me smarts ask. Is and what intelligence is and all that. Yes. So there, there was one lady who was shunned very much for her. I'm skipping ahead, but I, I the question I think is apropos. Uh, she was a a very large proponent of birth control. And she was shunned for the majority of her public career until she tied birth control to eugenics. Then it gained popularity. So one of her promotions was don't have a child if you cannot financially handle it. The financial burden of having a child or children. Don't have a kid if you can't handle it financially. Right. Do you, what's your take on that statement? In a utopian world, I would love that all humans would sell, would recognize whether they could afford financially and emotionally to have a child well, or of course. two. Right. I would love for people to do that. The challenge is the in unfortunate circumstances without proper early education or anything, you have younger people having children that aren't ready in the first place. And, but don't know they're not ready, for example. But it's already too late at that point, right? You've already, you're having the child now. It's already part of this society. It sounds awful when I say it, but I, th- I feel like self-regulation is good. I can't, we can't force people to not, right? In my opinion, though, if, if I were to have an opinion, which this may end the podcast completely, <laughs> um, I feel that chi- in this type of society, childbirth would be a privilege, not a right. Just like driving is a privilege but and not shouldn't, a right. Shouldn't, and I think we should be licensed to be parents. Shouldn't I being know that a, sounds horrible. Isn't being a parent a privilege? Isn't that part of... Right, like, but it's not a right. No. We treat it right? like a right. I mean, like, so my thought was to li- like make it licensed. Take a test. Go through... Tri- everyone has to do... This, this would be for betterment, in my opinion, because we at least have all the same foundational start of parenting. And then it goes astray by its own thing, but at least we all start at the same point. If we all had like, like a guideline, right? Like everyone, this is a really good way to, to raise your children. Obviously people would say what's good and what's not. However, there's a general good way. He's like, feed them when they're hungry, 
clean them when they soil themselves. You know, like the basic maintenance parts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Child maintenance? Don't duct tape them and put them in a closet. That's probably a great idea. Uh, don't, that's don't what the nuns did, death. dude. That wasn't the right. parents. But you understand what I'm saying. Like, I, of course I do. So what are your thoughts on my ridiculous so comment? So basically to summarize, <laughs> uh, Keanu Reeves summed it up very well with his statement in the movie Parenthood. You need to pass a test to get a driver's license, but any asshole can be a father. Ta-da! Oh, I didn't Which, even know he said that. See, that's exactly that's where before I was. he was Neo and before he was, you know, super popular guy. With he said that to Steve Martin, I think. I love Steve Martin. Speaking of, but um, yeah. So, but what are your thoughts on that? Like, am I okay? No, I I agree Hello, with you. Twitter but world. the problem am is, am I a fucking evil? The, the human issue being is for, that you and I are not parents, yeah. and the issue is that you and I. I imagine would be very, very good parents. Not that you and I are looking to adopt a child together because that would be weird. So, um, cause we're both <laughs> responsible, you know what I mean? And we it, both, we both think that, well, okay. I'm not, I can't speak for you. I'm sorry. You can speak I, for me. No, I cannot. I'll, I'll correct I can, us. I cannot. Uh, I think I would be a really good parent. Not, I mean, obviously it's not going to happen. I'm old and stuff. So, but the, the point is, I agree with you that we see neglect a lot and, you know, and that sucks. And sometimes that neglect is not intentional. A lot, a lot of the times because of alcoholism or drug abuse or a myriad of issues, right? Some of the stronger kids come from neglect though. Well, like, uh, of they, course. Because they really learn their, to make their own mistakes. Like, yeah, I, once again, my parents are great people. They were in, in, they were involved in everything and I could not make mistakes and I didn't learn because I couldn't make mistakes. It wasn't until I was on my own and really screwed up and realized what debt was or what, yeah. you know, whatever it was. Cause those types of, those are just personal things. But overall, my parents took on, like I said, on paper, took great care of me anyway, but, um, you and I are also, I'm also self-aware to know that I could break a child. I'm emotionally not healthy. Like, that's the truth. That's not, you well, know. no one is 100% well, emotionally healthy. I understand that. And obviously, every person is damaged in some way. Therefore, every child is damaged. But being aware of it. Well, yeah. We, we, we are, you and I, I think, are very self-aware of our shortcomings. Whatever they may probably be. Probably too much. Right. Probably too much. And that's, <laughs> that's definitely part of the reason for me not wanting children the whole thing is i yeah. got a vasectomy at 34 man that's how that how it was it's just it made sense to me for me i would not say that for anyone else however i think it is really callous to not to have a child and have and go in completely blind especially super young and not knowing you know that's just my opinion yeah no i agree but go ahead. Uh, no, I, I'm, that's all I have on that subject. So uh, let's so, move along with okay. eugenics. All right, and we'll talk about birth control again with with this woman. Yes, she comes down. She comes up. So you have the term eugenics. What what was the term that you got from the Latin? Because uh, that's where we're at now. Latin, Greek, something like that. It was a combination of two words: well and born. Well born eugenics, which I thought was interesting. That they coined, or uh, was it Davenport, or or might have been Galton. I I forget. I th yeah, it might have been. You know, it might have been Davenport. It doesn't it's, matter. It's one of there. the two main yeah. guys, yeah. Davenport or Galton, one of the two, I uh, coined the phrase eugenics, and then it became religious. Like they were talking about it. Well, you know, in a way, yes. And initially, Davenport opens up a thing. He start he works with plants and animals and crossbreeds. When you say open up stuff. a thing, what does that mean? An institute of some sort. On he the north shore a, of Long Island, yes, he opens up a ten-acre establishment. Sure. What do you want to call compound. it? Compound. Sure. Yes. Colt compound. No, I come on, man. It's not like that. It's not like Waco. It's they had Dominion. they had birds and chickens and, and that goats. No pterodactyls. Like, like it was a Timothy? it was a pterodactyl free environment, sir. Okay. <laughs> there was one Chewbacca. <laughs> he tended to the goats. He was a goat herder. <laughs> Like, Scruffy nerf herders, what yes. it was. Of course it was. <laughs> so, so what do you so this is where Gregor Gregor Mendel comes in. 
Gregor Mendel. Yeah, he's the guy who studied the heredity and peas. Yes, yes. And that's where everything, that's where the whole thing was the Mendelian. Remember when they started Mendel, talking about Mendelian yes, yes. stuff? It all tied back to him. And he, what he, he found certain characteristics in peas. Yes. But once again, a pea isn't a human being. It's no, much more No, I'm pretty sure a pea is not a human being. That's what I've heard. Now, I've heard that human beings take them. Uh, peas? Yeah. And pea breaks. Yes. And we can be two peas in a pod. We can. We can be it. like peas and carrots. Like Boba Jones. Um, but they weren't, obviously, this is very new, right? Your brain, they just realize all these new ways to study things. So the assumptions would be, oh, a pea is a living thing. So humans living. So it's the same. Or, you know, you wouldn't think of the complexity in some cases, right? So you'd think a lot simpler terms because it's brand new. Con these are brand new concepts that these people are. So what was the law? What did he learn from the peas? It was about the law of heredity. Okay. Um, but basically he was finding that he could cross or, you know, pollinate or whatever, make peas certain, have certain traits and characteristics by combining them or something. That's my understanding of it. What I what I remember was there was a a, a drawing that there was the three in one rule that it was yeah. every <sighs> shit. How do I? Explain? It was a ratio of three to one. Right. But I didn't I didn't get very much in that um, because they didn't talk. They they talk briefly about the three to one rule and they had like a diagram yeah, up. But that the three in one rule was okay if you have four P's. Three were the same, one wasn't. And that was true with every generation down. So if they were breeding the peas, that was true with every generation below that as well. Then they found that to be true with chickens. They found that to be true with other animals besides peas. Is that is that correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay, so, the so peas, that was the law of heredity. Yeah, Heredi the law of heredity was, like you said, the three, it was the a three, three to one, one rule, right? ratio rule okay. or whatever it Something was. Something to I that effect. Was, that that stuff could be passed down into like a ratio of three to one, right? Yes. So they could, they had a three quarter, you know, 75% chance basically. In yes. Getting Correct. Something yes. Like that. Thank you. Um, and they, they did. And then what Davenport took it to other plants and then added animals to your point with the chickens and all that. Yeah. Mendel only did the peas. Yes. But they, they stole they his idea his, from the peas, right. the three and one. And correct. then used that as a template for their, for their studies. Yes, correct. And, and it really, yeah. So and they, they discovered that it was the same. I mean, it was yeah. true with other things besides peas. Yes. And then they thought, you know, it was an, once again, a natural step from breeding animals to breeding humans. So then they were like, well, can we breed humans? It's like, well, no, because they take how long to develop, right? 20, 30 years. <laughs> how long for a Right. Time. It's generations, right? You can't study a full, you know, how many generations can you really study? Uh, so three or four. You need a much shorter kind of thing. But yes. it did make sense, though, to go from thinking about the animals to thinking about doing it with humans, right? Agreed. So this guy creates some family history questionnaires, and he traces the pedigrees and looks for desirable traits in all of these questionnaires that he handed out, right? And where did he send the questionnaires? Uh, to a lot of well-born people, I thought. I thought it was prisons. Was that the prison one? Where yeah, pretty sure. That... Yes, yes, with yes, prisons yes. and also like, right? They didn't say insane asylums, but that's that right. seems yeah. like what it was. Yes, it was at the the prison. They were looking. Well, they were looking for it everywhere, not just on the high oh, side. No, they were looking course. for the bad people too, because right. that's where the whole point of the next piece that we're going to talk about is about getting rid of the bad stuff. Yes, and not even undesirable it, traits. Right, not not adding good. It's just removing to your point alcoholism. The criminality yes. and all these other negative societal issues, right? Yes. So, um, so they go, f the, um, the, and a lot of these people were apprehensive about the influx of immigrants, right? Because this is a time when, what was it, um, these high, these well to do people are leaving the front porch and the streets of New York are littered with, just immigrants every like immigrants everywhere and they're poor and they're dirty and they're what you know they're lesser because they're well, not well they've only been in know. america for a week right, right right and they may they probably don't know english yeah absolutely so, yeah they're the, trying to make a better life for you know themselves. because in you know in the, in the northeast your ellis island is right there yeah and they said seventy five thousand people a month were coming through ellis yeah. island that is a lot of people 
and think about people. those people. Are they going to stay in New York? Are they going to try to migrate to? They're going to go where the jobs are, right? How do they feed their families? That's where the people are going to be. That's that's it. That's survival, right? Right. That's exactly what it was. But this is the thing: is you know, America was great because of these people that made America great. Like, yes, we talk about the guy that comes in later. How he had relatives that signed the Declaration of Independence, yes. and he came across, came over on the fucking Mayflower, basically. A pilgrim. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. He was one of the Puritans, right? That came over. Yes, so, exactly. Correct. Um, so we'll talk about that, of course. But um, the immigrant thing was a big, big issue. So they had this thing called the Progressive Movement. Do you have any notes on the progressive movement and what that um, was about? Was that Mr. Grant or is that later on? Um, Henry Goddard was Goddard. the no, guy in no. this one. Okay, so was, they had a great belief in science, but they also had a belief in the government solving social problems. So it's really interesting because initially, right, the United States was founded on the the lack of government, right? Yes. And here we are at this point, and they're saying the government should help solve social issues. So they wanted to stamp out alcoholism, quote unquote, bad people. And to your point, once again, you're right. Davenport studied the, all traits of humans, not just once again, not just the high people, the high born or whatever, the, the educated, the smart, but also the criminals and the alcoholics and the, the you know, the prisoners. Drug addicts. Yeah. And the, and the yes, mental institution. Of course. People, right. Yeah. So um, they started to to zero in on low intelligence and call that feeble mindedness. That's where feeble mindedness came up. It just meant low intelligence. That's where the term was first established. Is that correct? That is correct. So then this Henry Goddard guy comes in, right? 42 years old, wanted to eliminate feeble mindedness and he created okay. some kind of intelligence right. test. Do okay. you want to take it from there? Um, well, there was no, that wasn't, I was thinking about the test they did in the military. That wasn't, that wasn't the same test. Was Not it? the same test. Okay. This is the one where they had the three types of people. Yeah, I knew that, but do I, remember I that? do you remember the test that they took? It was just, he just created an intelligence test. Okay. It was a very basic thing right. that he created. Right. I do remember that they had three levels and it's really sad because the, the levels that he created are now terms that we use every single day in a very derogatory way. Uh, the levels were more, I'm more on idiot and imbecile. So I thought, <laughs> that's messed up. And it was crazy because idiot was the bottom, imbecile was the middle, and moron was actually the highest. They were, there were three types of moron. Remember the Yeah, high there was different moron. levels of moron. Right. So moron was just subhuman is basically yeah, the way they looked at it. From but an intelligence perspective. Right. The term moron. And right. it's actually, a, it's still a scientific term. But we obviously have taken in the lexicon moron. of- Moron. Yeah, you moron. You're like, <laughs> uh, what's uh, the Goldbergs? You moron. And uh, what are we supposed to do, you moron? Like fucking Animal House. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> idiot, imbecile, and moron were the three main types, right? And he studied 35 patients. He found a link between feeble-mindedness um, due to defective ancestry. And th that's it. his words. That defective was his word. De ancestry. Defective ancestry. Um, he found a, a link between feeble-mindedness and alcoholism, crime, etc., so then he became a strong believer in eugenics. And then we get into 1910. Do you have any information, any notes on that one? If you have mine, you can use mine. I'm just going to steal your notes, yeah, bro. Yeah, take them, bro. Uh, Mr. Davenport was convinced that certain human traits were passed down in a predictable way. And the American society can be improved dramatically if reproduction was controlled. Which I find disturbing. <laughs> but then again, I just said that it should be licensed. So is that well, a type of control? I mean, I'm I'm different than people. Please, please, everyone, don't hate me forever. I just feel this is this is a personal thing. But I'm not on a crusade to do this, right? I've chosen to not have children myself. So that's just how I feel about it. I'm allowed to have a per, an opinion about it as long you know I don't feel like I'm doing anything wrong by having an opinion. Yeah, of course not. But I mean, yeah. But it's controlled, right? If, if it were licensed, it would be controlled in some way. Who licenses it? That's that's my that's my f f uh, not fear. That's not the right word. But what? How would how would the human race? How would a government entity regulate that? Oh, I'm sorry. It's like a driver's test. Sorry, you couldn't parallel park. You fail. Oh, you're oh you only got seventy nine percent. No kids for you. You can retake it in a year if you study harder. Like it's an SAT. Come on. It's a PAT, a parental advisory test. That's great. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not a point after attempt. That's different. 
totally different. But wouldn't it be great to have something that everyone knew how to hold a baby the first time or how to handle a baby or how respond, how, how um, heavily responsible the responsibility of the baby. Right. I mean, look, I've heard a story of a woman getting high at a party and putting her baby on top of her fucking car. Oh, shut up. On the roof of the car. It was in Phoenix and she drives home and did a turn. The baby, the baby was safe. It was in the thing, the car carrier, car carrier, but holy shit, man. Like, I understand people are still going to do that. People are going to leave dogs in, in car in, in cars in Phoenix in 120 degrees and leave and not leave the motor running, not leave a crack. They're going to leave children. Children are going to drown in pools, right? Like these things are still going to happen. What were you saying about me drinking on this podcast today? But can't we minimize it? Well, who? Can't we, huh? can't we all just get can't along? We just, can't we just minimize those issues is my point, right? I'm not saying that it's going to eliminate them because people are people. We make mistakes. We are people fallible. People are people. Am and I, stuff and stuff too. Am I starting you to drink today? Oh, yeah, dude. Why? I've already started drinking in my head, bro. But, but it's a good thing. You no, man, it's depressing. Oh, man, control and regulation. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah, control and regulation. My favorite. <laughs> one thing that you and I love. Shit. The one thing, like, I'm talking about putting a control system in place, and I hate fucking being told what to yeah, do. asshole. I'm such a dick. Hey, Mark, you cannot burn the system down until there's another one in place, okay? Right. I'm trying to make a system to burn down later. Oh, okay. Duh. <laughs> anyway. So where are we at after that? I don't know, uh, man. I'm, I'm slitting my wrist. That's where I am. <laughs> so then they created a new institution, right? Dedicated to eugenics. Do you want to talk about the E.H. Herman? How they how that dude bled her money? How he how he suckered her into that? He suckered oh, her. Just kidding. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Davenport, yeah. the main guy from Long Island. That the, he Davenport was the main American figurehead. He's the American influence. He's for the main. Sure. American figurehead for all of eugenics. He went to Mrs. Harriman in New York City. Her husband passed away. He was a railroad magnet or magistrate or some shit like that and left her with a boatload it's of money. A magnet. Magnet. Back then. Sure. Mang- magnet or magnet. The Something dude like had that. a lot of cash, bro. So he <laughs> he went and talked to her. And tried to get money from her because he thought that she could be persuaded that eugenics was a good thing. And he was successful in that and she became a very good supporter and she gave a ton of money to the eugenics cause to help promote and publicize eugenics across the country. Yes. Um, Yeah, Miss E.H. Herman. So she had all the money. It's not environment, it's genetics. Eugenics would solve all the problems in society. So she pledged money to him, right? She pledged basically her loyalty or whatever, and a lot of financials. Uh, but this is the question, right? That was the next question. Who decides what the correct feature should be? What the correct what should be? Features, features? right? What does the, that mean? Well, when we talk about eugenics, who do we deem, what features do we deem acceptable, desirable, and what features do we deem not desirable? And who makes those decisions? That's the biggest problem with eugenics as a whole, right? Is it whiteness? Is it Asian? Is it African American? Is it person of color? Is it indigenous? Who's the what's the right ge, you know genetic makeup to do, right? What, how do we who chooses what are the features we're looking for? I don't think there's a right answer to that question. Right. And that's the biggest problem. I agree. It's like the same thing I just said about, okay, well, who's on the committee to allow people to get licenses to have kids? Right. Who's on the committee to write the test that you have to take to have kids in your little DMV department, Department right. of Transportation? Find me an unbiased test. That's the problem is that not only that, but you can't, it's kind of like on the Mars podcast. Who's going to be on your committee that, you know what I mean? Right. Besides Keanu Reeves, who's going to be on the committee that is going to be neutral and peace and love and what's in the best interest of humanity? I, I don't know. Everyone can be bought. So at cer- at a certain point, as I've said before, what what are you, what are you going to do? Is, yeah. there, is there a right answer? I don't know if there is. And I don't that, think there is. That's the biggest problem with the whole eugenics is putting anyone in control of a program like that. They make a decision of what's best. Well, what they think is best. Right. 
and you can't obviously right. you can't make everybody happy all the time right so let's say some dude or lady makes a decision and they think is in the best interest of the human race well 26 percent of the people might go that's bull crap this is horse shit what you know blah 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 they might freak the fuck out right you don't know right but they think they truly believe that they're doing the best thing for the most amount of people but somebody may think the exact opposite of that yeah yeah, I mean, who's to say that, uh, well, and we'll get into the exact people with, with uh, the trait book and all this other stuff. The trait book? Yeah, inferior, I loved inferior germplasm. That was, that was fucked up, ones. dude. Yeah, so they go through all this stuff. Um, now, this is the thing. If you set aspirations that blind you to a certain set of consequences, that's really what this became is like, we're looking to do this, but... The consequences are that, but you like you're so focused on what you're trying to accomplish, the end goal, that you're not looking at the negativity of it. You're not looking at the downside of what it can do to the other side of the coin, and that's where that's where it gets dangerous because no one can decide, right? Yeah. So October 1910, they open this institute, right? The Eugenics Records Office or Unite Eugenics Record Office. It housed hereditary information on American families to use it to guide the reproductive choices of the nation. Um, it, it it basically began institutionalizing eugenics, so it started making it uh, like giving it bigger teeth because it's now there's an institution of eugenics, right, with the with the office. And that's where Davenport used the money from the lady miss em railroad chick from new york to yep. start the institute e. Harriman. sure yeah 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 the rich railroad chick ef hutton sure so they listened and then uh so harry laughlin was a guy you mentioned earlier he ran the institute and the trait book right data was used as gospel but nothing was checked i what i found really interesting was the one guy's like yeah yeah they said this and they just wrote it down it's like oh okay then that's what it is there was no double checking no Checks and balances. Yeah, I found it very interesting that they they uh, they sent out surveyors to ask people questions um, all over the country, and they they would say, "Oh, so tell me about your dad. Oh, he was this or that. Oh, but my uncle, he sure was an alcoholic, and he died ten years ago. So he'd write down, uncle was an alcoholic. Right. But the, and then they would put that information in the well, I called it a big database, but it was basically a room with paper and file cabinets. So they put that information in the database, uh, but they never verified it. There was no checks and balances at all that the uncle was an alcoholic. So they automatically assumed that that was a oh, the rest of the family is predisposed to alcoholism because the uncle was. You know, I, I don't know. Was that how do you? That's, that's messed up. I agree. And that was the point is they just took that as like, oh, well, then you're bad. Your uncle is bad. So that's your that's your lineage. So right you're there. you're our, your the other state's guy. been sealed already. Right. Because your uncle liked to have a cocktail. Yeah. I mean, and what's your definition? You know, everyone has a different, excuse me, a different definition of that, too. Like, oh, he had one drink a day. Oh, well, somebody might think you are a drunk or, oh, he drank once a week. Somebody might think you're a drunk. I mean, there's that's a wide range of definitions i agree 100 percent um so what what this database to your point was it was the inventory of the blood of the community right and here's where that not literally blood right but you know figurative blood yes <laughs> um and that's where the inferior germplasm came in um, the so, inferior germplasm. germplasm that's such great what but it was fuck? cold dude that sounds like a metal album that's gonna be awesome bro <laughs> <laughs> how dare you what it does you start early <laughs> it's not even a song that already exists you're already making stuff up for it yeah i love you man i don't have a metal band or or a song but i have an album title screw it i love it yeah that could be inferior germplasm could be a name of an a band yeah yeah Cause like we make inferior germplasm. <laughs> now opening for war. <laughs> inferior, inferior germplasm. Nice. <laughs> Sorry, sidetracked. No, Sorry. So what they did? This was cold hard pure science, right? Like it did not look at anything other than just numbers, strains of bad behavior slash personality. The eugenics record office recommended widespread education and aggressive government intervention, laws that prohibit 
the defectives from entering the country, prohibit them from marrying, and prevent them from becoming parents by segregating them in asylums throughout their reproductive years. But how can you call it cold, hard, pure science when the data is flawed? When, when it's not, there's no validation of it at all. The numbers were correct. The context was always wrong, though. It's, it was out of, well, it was yeah. the context that was really the, right? Because what no, they yeah, were looking at was, no, was the yes. numbers. They basically said, this equals that. But that, that well, wasn't the case because the context was out. Right. Wrong. They say one plus one equals two, but one was really seven or right. some shit like exactly. that. They never got, they never right. got the base number infra- okay. information yeah. correct. Okay. So yes, you are correct. I don't find, I, I, Okay. No, trusting this stuff is absolutely detrimental yeah. and fucked up. Right. Right. But the truth is they call that's what they called it. I'm not, you know, they just Yeah, said, I, okay. I just disagree with that term. Right. Cold hard pure science. Well, if you remember like think about you're a baseball guy, the statistic, you're a statistics guy, right? That's part of the base the lore of baseball. Remember they've got like runs and you know, walks and walks and strikeouts per innings pitch yeah or walk, hits, yes, yes yes walks hits per innings pitch, whip right Who whips cares? and right but it's like w- w- you know war is like wins over replacement right yes, stuff sir. like that yeah um these are some really crazy numbers that they started doing but if you looked at the base numbers the guy you know his batting average was like the base number you're like oh he's good because he bats blah 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 you know or he's bad because he blasts blah 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 but every time was a home run or he scored or something yes it changes the context of that, right? Like yeah, a power yeah, yeah. hitter doesn't hit as accurately as one that gets on, you know, yes. singles and doubles. Yes, or, of course. Or, you know, walk uh, a lot. Of course. So that's kind of the point, right? It's like you can look at a number from one side and it's 100% true in the context or the filter you're looking at it, but it's definitely not true in the broader sense of the, of the world. I would agree, sir. Okay. So after that, what else, what else do they recommend after doing the segregating them in asylums and stuff? Uh, sterilization. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Also recommended was a new procedure called sterilization. And that's what they came up with, sterilization. I never even knew that. Like, that's kind of the term where it got coined in a weird way. I wonder if it was with animals first or something, but... Uh... I, yeah, that's a good question. I wonder if it was with animals first. I don't know. That's interesting. But anyway, so they had sterilization. So L- that Laughlin guy. Who I call the evangelist. Yes. He was tell, the tell religious. Yeah, tell us what he well, wanted he was to do. Like, he, he, he was like the number two guy in America for eugenics. And he, it became like a religious movement to him. So it, it was weird. And... Slowly over time, as the movement began to change, he didn't falter. The guy was just hardcore. Uh, Oh, I give him credit for that, but I think he's a little nutty. Right. Well, he's definitely believed in what he believed in. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, And he wanted to use sterilization as a eugenic tool, basically. Yes. So he's like, okay, so let's, let's get these things on the books. Let's get these laws built. But how many, did you remember the number of, Americans that they thought needed to be sterilized to save America? Yes. Would you care to share? 15 million. 15 million. This is what, 1913? This was in 1913. So I did a beer Google, sir. What was the population of the United States in 1913? Checkmark. 80 million. No, sir. Higher or lower? Higher. 120 million. 97 million. Okay. So, so 100 million. he wanted to 15% sterilize, y- yes, ba- basically 15%. More of, than 15% because yes. it's less than 100 million. Correct. Let's just say 16.6%. Wow. He wanted to sterilize 16.6% of the population. That's fucked up, dude. That's one in seven. I know. That's fucked up. That's right? fucking Right? Like if you crazy. walk into Circle K and there's seven people in there, one of them's getting sterilized. One of them's getting their tubes tied or their nuts sack <laughs> cut. <laughs> that's, that's fucked up, that man. That is fucked up. I, I couldn't believe that. I, you know, and I had no idea the population of, of the U.S. at that time. So I was like, oh, 97 million. Okay. Whatever. But I was like, oh, shit. 15%. Damn. That's a lot. Oh, that's damn. a lot of motherfuckers. Yeah. Fuck. So, um, to your point, became religious, right? It was a yeah. movement. But then there was this T.H. Morgan guy, 
he was studying fruit, fruit flies in uh, in the fly room or something. Fly guy, fly boys. Fly the boys? fly boys were studying yeah. fruit flies with him in the fly room. In the fly at, room in a, the university. Yeah, and they were like using like bot- bottled glasses, milk bottles, milk bottles from, from the, the cafeteria. cafeteria they stole or whatever. Yes, <laughs> and, they, and the thing was, fruit flies would would uh, reproduce every ten days, yes, so sir. they could see very rapidly the how, genetics. The genetics, right? Yes, sir. Um, but this is where it was they discover is more complex than just these equal that, right? Even with the three to one ratio and all yes, that. Yes. Yes. The three to one ratio did not hold true. It was bull crap because he couldn't figure out. He was trying to figure out, okay, these flies have red eyes and I can't figure out if the next generation has red eyes or not. These have short wings. I can't figure out if the next generation has short wings or not and they did this for six years yeah they weren't able to peg it down to exactly what was needed or what they needed to do to get exactly the result they wanted so if he says i can't figure out what this fly is going to do how the hell are you going to figure out what this human's going to do so he was a he totally thought eugenics was bullcrap damn skippy tell you what so he was actually on the board or something with the eugenic record office. he was and so he asked he, to be removed yep yes that to be is removed. correct sir okay and then what happened after that sir uh let's that see. was the uh pan- oh, but eugenics i'm sorry they stormed forward eugenics is like screw this guy we're still yes. moving forward they once again now now they're a cult i mean that's, well that's all intents, your word sir for all intents and purposes intense. for lack of a better and purposes intense and and in and in, intensive purposes in tp in teepees also all the teepees none of the tents in sleeping bags yes um in are you log cabins pitch a well. tent what whoa bro hey now i've had a i've had a Shh. pitch tent since you sat down sir shut up <laughs> um but eugenics like fuck this we're moving forward <laughs> that's exactly what they said so february 20th 1915 18 million people attended this thing called the Panama Pacific International Expo in San Francisco. Over nine months. Kind of reminds you like a World Fair is exactly kind of thing. like a World Fair, yes, sir. Yeah. Tell me more about it, man. Uh Maybe. they had a bunch of dis- different exhibits there, but it was basically an exhibit of science and technology to show how amazing America is. And they had railroad stuff and telephones and all these newer technologies. Uh, 1915, so right before World War One, I'm sorry, no, middle of World War One. So the eugenics had a room there that everybody got to go see how you could better yourself and you could better society. And so it was the way I my version is it was a sales tactic. I, I don't for eugenics, right? I don't. Uh, do you agree with that? To an extent, uh, except for it was a different guy who it was guy who now enters the picture it wasn't made by davenport they did have stuff but it was the race betterment exhibit yes we're talking about yes it was actually made by john harvey kellogg wasn't it i don't think so okay so i I think kellogg was after that because what i have is here i have it just as that as part of my notes, a race betterment exhibit with John Harvey Kellogg. He's the inventor of cornflakes. Right, Kellogg. Course. And yeah, the Kellogg uh, Grain Company. What, I don't know what you call it. The them. Kellogg Sur- Corporation? Yeah, Kellogg. Kellogg Inc. Sure. Uh, believed in cleansing bowels and health, right? Yeah, the guy, Kellogg was obsessed with it. Yeah. He was obsessed with health and fitness and cleanliness. Uh, he was all, you know, talking about washing your hands. So he thought that he invented cornflakes to help take care of your Cleanse intestines and your colon, et cetera. So um, he he thought that that health and fitness ideas was directly tied to eugenics. Or to genetics itself, right? Like, so diet yes. can influence the genetics of someone, like yeah. their, how they feel about things or their intelligence. If they lived a clean life, they could be sharper, right? Right. So he felt that environment had a lot to do, you know, influenced genetics or your growth or your you know development as much as of course as much as the genetics which is inside which is these things you can't control right right you can't control what you are what your you environment have. you can only control is, the environment yes right so um the attendance exceeded expectations right 18 million he equated human worth with the qualities they themselves had that's where the problem was came, that right? kellogg um i don't think that's well the the whole exhibit 
as a whole, the whole idea of the eugenics during the fair or during this, during the expo yes. was the people that attended tended to be almost all white, middle and upper middle class and Protestant. That was like the running theme of all the, the people that attended the eugenics portion of the expo. Okay. Right. Right. So yeah. they were saying like they equated human worth with the qualities that they had themselves, not others. Right. They're like, well, look how good we're doing. Well, we're white and we're this and we're that. So that's what we're, that's what we'll use as a template. Right. Cause that's what they saw as good. So you're saying that those people thought everyone should be like them. That's what, yeah. And that see, that to me is like, I mean, you are a little tiny baby step away from master race. Yeah. I mean, it's right there. Yeah. You know, and that's that's in America, in San Francisco. Yeah. In 1915. Yeah. That's well before the Nazi party. Five years ago. That's well before the Nazi party. Yeah. That's 18 years before that. Yeah. 105 years ago. That's not not a very long time ago. Right. I mean, it's pretty freaking crazy. Yeah. So. But but how else would you do it, right? If you came up with an idea, like this is the problem with ideas like this. You come up with an idea and go, I'm smart enough to detect that there's a correlation between this base intelligence and who you're married to and who it is that you're dating or whatever, right? That's your filter. Of course you're going to go from your filter. I mean, I'm not... I'm, right. I'm Everybody not, has that fil uh, uh, filter. Right. I'm not defending it. No, I'm but not, that's just reality. Right. I'm not promoting this. I'm just clearly stating that if you came up with this theory of something, it's through your lens. So you're like, well, of course, I came up with this idea that if we do this, so I must be the people that we must be after because I was smart enough to come up with this idea in the first place. I see what you're saying. In a weird way. It's like yeah. I created the... I, I make the rules. It's my ball. It's my ball, so I make the rules, right? Are we in the sandbox, or what in yeah, the hell is going on? That's what humanity is, though, isn't it? It's just one giant sandbox. Oh, so <laughs> so anyway. Um, I'm taking I, my fire truck. I'm going home. I do apologize if, if the Kellogg thing was not connected to the race betterment thing, but I, I, I don't uh, know, It might man. be. I, took, I mean, I, don't, I, I, mean, I just pages, watched it this bro. morning, so it's took, no big deal. I took five pages. Five pages, bro. Yeah. So- they were the defining movement for American eugenics moment. Or, I'm sorry. The defining moment for the American eugenics movement was the amount of people that showed up to this. Yeah. Expo that 1915 was huge. Yeah. Now it wasn't 18 million that, that attended the, the, uh, the specific eugenics thing it was 18 million that attended the expo. I think it was like still a huge number well, though, yeah. of people. I, I didn't get that exact number. I don't think they said it. Okay, so what happened after that? Uh, the Ka did you want to talk about the Kalakak family and all that stuff? Uh, sure. I'm trying to think. Do you, who wrote the book? The Kalakak. There's a book called The Kalakak. K a l l i k a k. The Kalakak family. Right. Uh, who do you know? Who do you remember? Who wrote the book? I don't remember who wrote the book because it didn't matter who wrote it because it wasn't one of the people that we're real talking about. It's just somebody wrote this book. Right. Somebody wrote this book called The Kalakak Family, right. which basically was a, it's the study of a family and the generations and how it gave examples of how negative traits are passed down generation to generation or so you were led to believe. And whether it was, again, criminology, I'm sorry, not criminology, um, being a criminal or being an alcoholic or whatever that may be. The, it was painted in such a way that it was negative. And, oh, you got that from your dad. Nothing to do with where how you were raised, nothing to do with your environment. You were you got it from your mom. Sorry, you got it from your uncle. Eh, you got it from your grandfather, whatever. And then that was so popular, that book sold so much, it was ingrained in a popular culture where it was used in campaign speeches and it was used in Congress and it was used in everyday language to almost to a fault. The Germans used it. The Nazi Germans even referenced Kalakak family in one of the propaganda films they were showing. Holy crap, I don't remember that part. Because he said Kalakak fam family oh, from really? Kalakak. Yeah. Oh, shit. And it was dude. like, you could see it. It was really interesting. So, to your point, huge, huge thing. Um, it was a book about how one family is affected by quote unquote bad breeding. It was only bad breeding, nothing else would matter. That was what it was. And that, that started. You know, once again, there's eugenics uh, rearing its ugly head. And then we get into World War One, And that's what I, I found this. I didn't know any of this. 
Well, I didn't even know what eugenics meant, dude. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I didn't even it. know it was in the American mainstream. Like, you know, you read history books yeah. and I was a good student because I had to be. So I didn't even know. I, I don't remember studying this in school. Once again, I just remember master race and yeah. Hitler with the purity and all that. And that's the only thing I think about is pure race. Pure race. That's the only place I go back to. I don't go back to, to your point, to America pushing it to where Hitler and we'll talk about it again, but Hitler like references it in his, in his biography. Yeah. Right. Like, and he uses it. Like he says, we should do what the Americans are doing. Can you what believe that the shit? Fuck. Yeah. We'll get to like, that. Yeah. We'll get to okay. that. So to come back world war one, the 3 million men were drafted yeah. and so we all, spiked our, our military just exploded well, yeah. at that point. So in 1917, the U S joined world war one, which had been going on for two years and 3 million boys men were drafted they were all giving tests there was an alpha test beta test the alpha test was if you spoke english if you literate if you could literate write, i'm sorry read, 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 read and write literate i apologize uh beta test was if you were illiterate or could not read and write english is that correct that's basically correct okay yeah, so they did pictures and tried to yeah, it, it seemed was, like a dumpster fire of a test. I mean, I'll it watch, really did. Watch, go ahead. Sorry. So there was, uh, if you did not read or write English, they made you draw pictures. And there was a house with a chimney, but the chimney did not go above the roof. So an Italian American, they made you okay, complete what's missing in this picture. Instead of drawing the rest of the chimney, he drew a crucifix because that's what he thought went there. Like that's not right or wrong. Yeah, I mean, it looked like a church because it kind of. It, uh, yeah, I mean, I could see that I or something. I, I yeah. thought, oh, a, a chim you just continue the chimney. But this was in 1917, and this dude is new to America. Obviously, didn't read or write English because he was taking the beta test. So, the point of the story is, half of the soldiers that took these all well, all the soldiers took the test. 1.5 million. Soldiers were labeled to be morons. Yeah, considered morons or below intelligence. That's terrible, man. Yeah, but but the test was just once again. The it, test is the issue, I believe. It showed it showed the biases that you go in with a test, right? Is to your point, we're expecting extend the chimney because that's what we have in America. Yeah, but in you you don't you're not looking through the filter of an immigrant from Italy. Correct. Do you recall on the Alpha test there was one gentleman who rattled off one of the multiple choice questions that was really tough yes do you what was the question Do you remember the question i don't remember the question but i do recall like it was in my mind while the while the documentary was continuing i thought it was interesting i was like how, it was a yeah, tough question a i was weird, like what the hell just weirdly worded or something it wasn't about like it wasn't. which river goes to which lake in africa or anything like that from the before but it was like what the hell kind of question is this yeah excuse me so then they in 1919 they created a national intelligence test yes and by 1920 of those admitted to feeble-minded institutes the vast majority were classified as morons so they they went once again they were using this three part or three type thing they have different classes of moron obviously i think it was like class one two and three i think if i remember correctly and then it was imbecile and then idiot or whatever so by 1920 the feeble mind institutes they had a vast majority were labeled were classified as morons doesn't mean they were just means they that's had this what test they were classified that's as. what they were classified as and eugenics this is the, the thing too eugenics preserves the current hierarchies right we talk about systems the systems that are in place that got us here are the ones they're going to use to continue so what it did was it just supported the strength of what systems currently in place right it makes them even stronger in their foothold over change right we've noticed that we're having some systemic issues in today's world or or it's coming a lot to fruition in general and these systems are being addressed now right to an extent as they always should be well we're trying we're trying yeah and it's hard it's not easy but we're definitely trying right but this is the thing eugenics once again preserve the hierarchy but things were changing. The world was getting away, you know, once again, getting away from monarchies and getting away from control and getting, yeah. away, you know what I mean? Like we got, we were getting to the point of really working on individual freedoms. I mean, I know it's still the third, uh, right now it's the twenties. Yeah. But there's a sh general shift for well, humanity to be individual and free. And women and, 
barely had the right to vote. 20 was when it happened. Black folks suffered. didn't have the right to vote for another 40 years. No, black people could vote, but they were still, there's still three fifths of a, of a, remember they voted even prior to prohibition. They could all, black men could always vote, but women didn't vote. I thought vote. they couldn't vote till 64, 1964. No, that's, that's I the civil rights movement, dude. Yeah, but I don't think that's the voting thing, is it? I have to look that up. Do you mind if I sound like an idiot? For a second, I love when you do that. <laughs> uh, when? Oh could, my God, that's I, just I ridiculous, swear to God, man! Oh, I thought they were just three fifths of a man. What? Remember, African Americans got the right to vote. Let's see, the Fifteenth Amendment, which is before suffrage. Let's see what year is that. Oh, um, Fifteenth Amendment isn't that sixty five? Eight eighteen sixty five. That's when they were freed. That's not when they can vote. Hold on. Oh, I mean, <laughs> bro, 14th Amendment. Now, you're going to have to talk and while I try to read this as quickly as I can. I don't want to talk. I don't even want to be here. I don't even like you. Bro. Bro. I thought you liked me. I mean, sometimes. So tell tell us more about the eugenics in the meantime. You, but about the what do you feel about the hi, the whole hierarchy? I think it's bullshit. Protecting the hierarchies. I, I obviously it's bullshit, dude, but you're absolutely right that it's it's another it's it's another infrastructure that oh hey we're in power so let, we need more information to stay in power i you know i i see your point it's poopy whatever it's dumb <laughs> it's yeah. fucking dumb but it made sense right it's like i i discovered eugenics so i should be the one using my history of my culture to promote it because i discovered it it's almost once again it's my ball my rules in a weird way and back into the sandbox so yeah. after World War One. What happened? Check mark. Well, I would like to say this: the Fourteenth Amendment of the Constitution, eighteen sixty-eight, granted African Americans the rights of citizenship. However, this did not always translate into the ability to vote. Black voters were systematically turned away from state polling places. But I think the right was given in eighteen sixty-eight. Okay, I'm totally wrong. I apologize. I hope that I am not. Now. It said in 1964, the 24th Amendment prohibited use of poll taxes, and then 65, the Voting Rights Act directed Attorney General to enforce the right to vote for African Americans. So 65, it was directed the the Attorney General to enforce the right. So the right was there, but there was no liberties, now and no was, one really was yeah, pushing the clean. You. So we're both correct, sir. Uh, Thank you. That is weird. We're you usually we're never both correct. That is unusual. Usually both of us are incorrect. Usually both of us are fucking wrong. <laughs> That's right. So after World War I, uh, a lot more immigrants poured in, right? 70,000, 75,000 yeah, a month a, yeah, to right. Ellis Island. You mentioned about that. So this is what was so weird. Davenport wrote in a letter, can we build a wall high enough so as we can keep out the cheaper races? Can we build a wall high enough so as we can keep out the cheaper races. And he doesn't mean cheap. He means when he uses the word cheaper, that's not. He's lesser. Yeah. It's not the way we think of it. Like, oh, I found it. I found this blob tennis racket cheaper at Dick's than I did at blah, blah, sports authority or some shit. He's not using it in the word. In the, He's using it at a quality. He's sense. correct. It's not financial. It's. It's lesser intelligence or lesser worth. Right. That's I mean, that just shows how much better he thinks he is than everyone else. Right. And I didn't really get that impression of him until he said that. Until that. Until it, that. Because he, I always thought he had the best of intentions. And so I was like, damn, that's fucked up. Man. And he was really interested at first. And it really took his mind, right? It, like, where can we take this? I think his curiosity. Yeah, he got. And then he got really into it. And then it did get this cult. It starts becoming this cultish religious thing because now you he's all in yeah so everything is about like you just dig your heels more right yeah uh, it's humanity we the pendulum well, the pendulum we always swing the pendulum too far the other direction and then when we correct we overcorrect the other way it's just it's just how we do it it's look it's part of humanity it's not a bad thing it's just how we process right well i don't you know you're right but i don't think that analogy holds true for this i think it's more about davenport was the man like this was his idea he was the main dude and he got caught up in his own movement right and he couldn't 
He couldn't. Well, I'm saying the pendulum swung. Stop it! Right, like, the pendulum swung too far to the point where he's actually saying, "Can we build a wall right. high enough so we can keep out cheaper races?" Initially, it was just about, "Hey, what about eugenics?" Right, and then it how goes do to we make us a better? And then it goes, "How do we keep out?" Yeah, right. You know, it it just got twisted, right? It's kind of like Anakin Skywalker becoming Darth Vader, but totally different. Yes. Uh -huh. So to whom? Okay, to so whom? he wanted to maintain the quote unquote traditional American stock. When we talk about stock, it's like uh, animals, right? The American stock would have been all the founding father people and all those people that built the country. Yeah. Not all these GD immigrants, right? Blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm just saying that's what, <laughs> that's what he's saying. <laughs> well, you can't say that because he probably couldn't use the Lord's name in vain back then. Oh, he yeah. You know, the Ten Commandments, bro. Yeah. So uh, to whom, do you remember to whom he wrote this? A this, friend. Was it Grant? It was Madison Grant, okay. sir. So tell us about Madison Grant. He was an old white guy. Uh huh. Yeah, that, this is that the guy. That's you, check mark. <laughs> Bro. Bro. Uh, he is an old white guy. And he, I would say, I described him as a traditionalist. He, his ancestors signed the Declaration of Independence. Uh, he, a tr very, very traditional American man, family money. Uh, you know, worked on Wall Street in New York City. Uh, they trace his ancestors back to the Pilgrims, Quakers, something like that. Puritans. Puritans. I was way it's off. Okay, we keep something saying to it. that. Effect. It's okay. Um, Once but, you get Pilgrim in the mind, you can't get it out. It's yeah. the only P word that we know there, back it, then. Whoa, you know. So, uh, Mr. Grant wrote a book, "The Passing of the Great Race," which the Great race to him we call it the nordic race so he believed some fucked up stuff <laughs> in my opinion the 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 synopsis it, it just tells you how kind of simple that the science was back then remember scientific method is still pretty new at this point like obviously we had our copernicuses and our galileo Galileis, and we had the, our we had our da vinci's and that's the 15 1600s right so you're this, saying this at this point the world was no longer flat Right, but remember, Darwinism takes over, right? This whole eugenics thing. It's science, but it's science from what they currently understand, which it turns, right? There's times when they find out it turns it on its ear, like when bacteria was discovered or whatever. It's oh, like, yeah. They're, like, they didn't know about all this stuff yet, right, or how this worked. They just had Ideas, an idea, yeah. and they're like, well, we represent that idea, so we must be right, right? And it, it, so what was interesting about this is Madison Grant, once again, to your point, Founding father, he had fathers that, that or ancestors that signed the Declaration of Independence. He was one of the Puritan founders. Came to America. He was a conservationist. I thought oh, that yeah. was interesting. Yeah, I and he that. saved the redwoods. Yeah, and and he re and this is what he said. He well, or they made it sound like he felt this way. He realized he was spending all of his efforts towards saving flora and fauna, right, while his own race was dying out. So, like in a weird like dr evil kind of twisted or mr glass kind of way <laughs> like in a dark twisted internal way he's like i'm just preserving a race that currently exists and does really well like he i mean in a weird way didn't he just see himself as like an extinct a, a race that's becoming extinct yes so was he was he bad in that thought back to you sir what, give me some thoughts about that. I, I, um, because I'm coming at it from a weird angle. No, I, I would definitely think that he, from his perspective, I don't think it was just a race thing. It was his way of life was dying out. Like, uh, to your point that you made earlier about you walk out of your building in New York and there's all these people and none of them speak English and they're poor. And a year ago, it wasn't like that. He, and what to put yourself in his shoes he's like what the fuck right. it's 1920 150 years ago my ancestor signed the declaration of independence to free this country and blood's been spilled and you people have no recognition of that is that what he's thinking in his mind right you know uh, how can you blame him for being the guy worked his ass, you know, he was, he was not a young man. He was probably 70, 75. Right. The guy worked his ass off, right? So. And coming at it from a conservationist perspective, I once again, you and I don't defend atrocious acts against no. people. No, 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 no. Okay, no. so the me the ends do not justify the no, means. No, of course in, not. In 
99.999% of any of the cases we talk about. Right. But in this case, through his lens of, I saved the redwoods. I saved this extinct, this, this turtle on the brink of extinction. I saved this animal, right? Or, or, oh, I saved this plant. And then he's looking around to your point and he's like seeing his numbers dwindle in his immediate vision, right? Yes. In his periphery, even. You know, he goes outside and boom, it's not the people that he grew up with, associates with, connects with, whatever. He sees himself as this not better race, just a race that's going away, right? Because it's semi perseverance or preservation, right? Yeah. Self preservation. Yes. It's not saying he's better. He still wants to, he just wants to exist in a weird way. So it, it's a weird, twisted kind of way to look at the world though it's a weird way to be to self-preserve yeah 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 so um so in in this case though some people did think they were better than others and because of the way the data was collected eugenics provided the data that supported the belief right it was easy it was not the other way around right it was just easy to do you know they came up with the idea and then made the documentary it's like uh, what <laughs> like it's like, I don't think Al Gore went into Inconvenient Truth asking the question if genuine global warming exists. I he, haven't seen it. I'm, I'm assuming he went in thinking in his mind or believing one side of it and then found the data to support in his film the one side. Documentaries don't seem to be like what they used to be where it's just like really boring and just give us the information. They usually have an agenda now. It sucks, but that's how it is, right? We all have agendas, so... The data they collected. <laughs> Stay on target. Belief. Right. Well, that's <laughs> what I'm just saying. The data they collected supported the belief in eugenics, right? The whole, all the, that, that there some people were better than others. Yeah. No, I, yeah, they did it reverse. I get it. Yeah. yeah. It, and it's fucking dumb. Yes. So 75,000 a month, right? Yep. Can we build a wall? American stock, blah, blah, blah. Passing of the great race. So did you have anything to add about the book? Did you have a note later on about him and hitler i do okay then i will wait but no I, go ahead no, 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 no i will hold my point till later okay and I, I i will earmark it for you to uh have it so um he talks about this nordic race that gets coined right he kind of coins it that's but he his term talks in his it. book the nordic race and yeah what, remember you said it, it, he had some fucked up ideas about it. What did you What did you take from it? My fuck. The, I was or what like, did he dude, believe, or what do you think? His idea was that the Nordic race was newer than other races, races of color, and he thought that if his Nordic race, quote unquote, as I use air quotes, if his Nordic race mixed with older races, races of color, they would be the genes would be predominant. And would overpower his Nordic race genes. Yeah. What kind of bullshit ass crap is that shit? Well, that's why I'm saying, remember the science. This is where they science science was not there yet. Right? He goes, they're the most evolved, but not set yet. Like uh, almost like a gel or like a gelatin or like a mold or what like an a cake. Idiot. Right? <laughs> but it, like concrete. Well, it but if you think about the mindset back then. Younger, younger didn't, older was better, like in a weird way. It made sense. Older, you always respected your elders. You always, you know, you always look to the age and experience were the thing that got you through. Yeah, I understand. So yeah. Through their lens in the 1800s or the early 1900s, whatever, it seemed like that would make sense in that way. I don't know. Obviously, you and I are like, what kind of bullshit is this? It's right? amazing because I, I, I really... I, I kind of admire him for his conservationism and saving the redwoods and, and for, he really seemed to treasure his family ancestry. And I think that's really cool. And then on the other hand, he's a fucking lunatic. <laughs> it's like, right. wow, I really like you. Oh, you're a dick. So it's like this weird, oh, what just happened? <laughs> it, it shows you how the bad guy isn't always the bad guy or, or, you can almost see the not the goodness in them, it, but it's not correct. But it's not like they're intentionally being bad. He, in his eyes, he's not being bad. Right. Like 
I use that Mr. Glass example. Yeah, right. Because right. basically the whole thing is he kills all of these people. Right. Just looking for someone who's not him. He didn't look at the people as people he killed. Yeah. He didn't look, he didn't want to kill people. Yeah. He, that was just the way to find the, the one that was invincible. The ends justify the means, but again, you and I don't think that those means are okay, but Mr. Glass did. That's correct. I totally get right? you. And yeah, that's, yeah. that's kind of how this guy is like, I get kind of what you're looking at, but do you see what the other problem is? Right? So it was that the most evolved, the Nordic race, but not set. <laughs> not set yet and they'd be overwhelmed by lesser races right so um he also saw that laws existed that prevented negroes from marrying whites but nothing about in immigrants that's the word they used so yes negro that's not At our word correct that's the word they used that's correct in i'm sorry yes i because i don't like i use that term normally, i'm just right? yeah i'm just yes. calling it out in their the laws that existed it was about negroes at the time marrying whites but nothing about Im immigrants so they wanted to limit in immigration as well so tell us about tell us about what happened when they limited the immigration how, how what they did with congress and stuff uh congress was oh, i'm gonna backtrack the you the eugenics institute placed a bunch of panels of information in the rooms where congress meets so congress the members of congress and the and the what the hell is it called the committee for immigration and reform and naturalization couldn't help but be persuaded to look at that stuff and then that committee thought okay we need to we do need to do something about immigration they went before all of congress and persuaded them yes we need to do something about immigration so they passed a law in 1924 and immigration was cut by 97%. Crazy. Crazy. I've got May 26, 1924. The guy that uh, Edward Bernays helped, right? Mr. Co President Coolidge. Right? It wasn't wasn't Coolidge the boring motherfucker that they had to help by they they had a party and they said he I made a I believe that's correct. He he I think he cracked a smile or something yes. in a, in a, during a party. Yeah, he signed in signed the restriction act. Right. Yes. Reduce immigration ninety-seven cents. How many years? Forty. I have forty years. Is that right? Is, is that? I don't recall. That sounds a little excessive. Yeah, but I think I took that down. Did not lift until forty years later. So that would have been sixty-four. 64. That makes sense. Sure. Really interesting. No idea. My parent. My parents were in that three percent that three percent that still skated by but world war ii is, yeah. is different with Europe. yeah that may have been vastly different. political asylum and, right oh yeah 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 so um i would think coming from east germany or whatnot so, right or well then became west germany whatever the whole germany i still gotta get my mom's in here so <laughs> all right so what else did it close the doors to that was the one thing too. yeah that was very disturbing this that... is where it reared its ugly head so yeah. 1924 is when this happened was when the law the law was enacted that's correct but the, the 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 ramifications of that law obviously were great because um you know just a couple of years later is when in 33 um the nazi party came to power and all jews and other people that felt threatened by the nazi party were trying to leave including anne frank's family and they were denied entrance in the, into the united states because of this law and then they died. That's freaking terrible. Yeah. The diary of Anne Frank would not have... But think about that. Imagine not having the diary of Anne Frank. I would totally be okay with no. never having read that. Hold on. My point, my point is care. we talk about causality and how interesting the universe works. Right? Mm -hmm. Like probably in another dimension, my opinion is they didn't have that law. And she came over and there's no fucking diary. Yeah. But wasn't the diary like a way for people to really create solidarity? You know what I mean? To get the strength to continue or whatever was through her words. So like the benefit of that literature to the world for her single suffering. I'm not, once again, I'm not justifying. I get but it. I'm, I understand. I'm just looking at the big picture. I right? understand. It's a weird it's a weird way to look at it though right like imagine not having that because she came over and there isn't anything yeah 
Next. <laughs> you you can continue. I, I'm good, bro. Okay, so they closed the doors, Jews, right? In the yes. 30s. Uh huh. That was the worst. And then I've got this is where the birth control lady comes in. Margaret yeah, which I, I did mention her. All right, so tell tell us tell us more about her. I suppose. Uh, I spoke well, again, much. she was the um the biggest proponent of birth control for obviously many many years. Um, well, reproductive rights, I guess you could you could call it, but she didn't do very well. Her, her, her thoughts on birth control and reproductive rights were falling on deaf ears. So eventually she figured out that eugenics was a way to reach people because it was popular. Um, and that again goes to my previous point about, Hey, where she said, are you financially able to take care of a child? Are you, and then she used a couple other phrases like, are you, I don't, God, I wish I could remember what she said. Do you remember, do you remember like, are you smart enough to have a kid? She didn't say that, but. Um, yeah, there was a movie that came out called, Are You Fit to Marry, for okay, example. Okay, there you go. Right? Yeah. Um, well, this is the thing though. Margaret Sanger, her reasons for birth control really weren't about eugenics. They were about liberating women I mean, well of course but she just used eugenics right no, no when she figured out correct. like, oh shit i can use eugenics to get my point across right Boom. and let's just say the culture of the 20s yes was not women have choice correct was not women you they know barely get voted. back in the right. kitchen get yes. pregnant you're knocked up again correct you you know do your clean the house right yeah like, that's that's the culture of the time of course it's just a address that's it for a statement what it is. yeah that's a statement that's not that's a fact correct yeah, that is not promoting it in any way yeah um but that was the culture at the time so in a her initial i it seemed to me that her original reasoning was for the liberation of women for that being ready or being able to take care of the child right like make it when you can versus when you just get knocked up right so it yes. changed it to choice yes Absolutely. And the culture, it, women didn't have choice back then. So right. That's where this eugenics becomes an issue because she didn't believe in eugenics, in my opinion. It didn't seem like she, she didn't want people sterilized. She didn't want people not to have mm -hmm. children because they want, they just, she just wanted you to be able to take care of the child, for example. Correct. Don't so, have a kid if you can't handle it. Right. And that was her main thing was just base, simple. But eugenics had moved such, so far beyond that in their philosophy yeah the, to the point where they're like let's make sure we control everything let's not let anyone in let's sterilize 15 million fucking people like so for her i don't think she realized how you know it was smart for her to do it yes but the back side of it she it, uh, yes the reasoning for them was like really bad for that's not how she viewed people i don't think I would agree. I don't, I, again, that I don't think she had bad intentions at all. She, I think she had good intentions, right? But ag and they again, got dragged in right? the got negative, in. the negative connotations, uh, sterilization and blah, 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 blah of, of eugenics. They, they got, that got tied to her and that's unfortunate. Yeah. So then after that, uh, they have that movie. Are you fit to marry? So she used eugenics to sell the use of birth controls, basically what she did. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's, but her, I mean, once again, is my opinion that she was all about the, f you know, the freedom of the person to choose. And that's where the birth control made sense in her mind. Um, so eugenics makes its way into 1920s American culture. And then do you remember that thing, the freaking alliteration, the tongue twister, the thing where they went all around the country and they had those like competitions? Yeah. Fitter families. Do, yeah. Do you want, do you remember the whole, the whole thing, the whole thing it's called? Uh, no, fit, fitter families for future firesides. What the fuck does that, what the fuck does that mean, Frank? Oh, I think like fireside chats, I think. Is back that when they were trying to tie it to fireside I'm... chats because of the president Roosevelt? I, that's what I think. It was really doing. weird, dude. It was it, that, that, that fitter families that they had in four different states at like state fairs and stuff like that. It was like a family competition. Like, is your family tall enough? Is your family smart enough? Is your family this? I'm like. Dude, it was like a family beauty contest, kind of. That's my term. Yeah, it was definitely some kind. It was a contest of vanity in some way, smarter, prettier, whatever. Yeah, more fit. And then they all got uh, they got a little trophy if you won, and then 
<laughs> and then you got to be in the town parade. Like, Yay. You, oh, like that's weird, man. And they, but they <laughs> keep doing it. Keep, keep doing it. The way, the way, yeah. And then, uh, but people were lined up to do that stuff just to participate. That was that's how popular eugenics was. That's what I found crazy. And the one that got me was the next one. Okay. Prominent African Americans started accepting the idea of eugenics. Yes. E. B. Du Bois, du Bois, one of the founding father, one of the founders of the NAACP. Correct. The National Association. The advancement of colored people. The advancement people. of colored people. Yes, sir. He starts buying into this idea. Yes. I mean, this is a current organization. Yeah, it's that, yeah. That's run. I'm not saying it's bad or good. I'm no, just saying like this is around. how powerful eugenics yeah. was at the time. Right. Is the man that was heady enough to found that organization was sold on it. Yeah. So it was beyond like it 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 had to really become beliefy, very faithy versus just straight. Well, I wouldn't say faith makes sense. You know what I mean? But I would definitely say that it crossed it. Cr obviously it crossed color lines because this gentleman tr tr incorporated it in, into the black community, yeah. you know, and he, he had the same exact beliefs as Davenport and as all these other guys. Yeah. And he tried to make his community better in the way that right. he thought he could. Right. And that's, a, that's a, again, the idea seems really novel and brilliant. Like it sounds sound it sounds like a good idea. Yeah. But then it's so nuanced, right? Because you had the term better babies, happier families, right? Simple slogan, but it's super it's super nuanced. It's it's layers. What does better babies mean? You're eliminating certain people from society? Because you don't or deem them good You're eliminating enough. them from having babies. Right, which ultimately removes their entire lineage. All their history goes away, right? And a lot of people, some people have children for legacy and for lineage, right? Like, I didn't have that need, but I could see, like, my dad is the only person, right, that's from his family. Yeah. So, like, having a boy to br carry on the name yeah. would be, an, is a novel idea to do. You know, some people have that, right? My brother has a, a son, so I'm good. Yeah, I'm I got you because I don't have that. I don't, you know, my dad's not going to, well, he's not with us anymore, but I don't, I'm not going to have a son. So there's no more protitas. Oh, oh sad panda. <laughs> no, it's going to be okay. Panda. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So better babies, happier families. Simple slogan, but very nuanced, right? Yeah. And then do you want to talk about Carrie Buck? Not really. That's just some sad shit, bro. All right. Well, tell us about her anyway. So Miss Carrie Buck was 17 years old in the state of Virginia. She was removed from school in the fifth grade, even though she was doing very well. And she was moved around to clean different houses to give money to her family. She was uh, raped by someone in her neighborhood. Is that, I don't know by who. Yes, and she was, was raped. pregnant. She was taken to an asylum because she was deemed morally... Deficient. Deficient, thank you. I, I couldn't remember the term. I know, you, I know your head's spinning, but you're looking for it. But yes, so, labeled morally deficient. Okay, oh, you're good. Morally deficient. So, even though she, because she was pregnant out of wedlock, she was labeled morally deficient. But she got pregnant by being raped. Semicolon, even though she was raped. That's some fucked up shit. Right. So, this was in 1930 something. And they correlated mental. And moral deficiency. So they felt if you were morally deficient, like remember we talked about alcoholism, criminality, yeah, right. whatever. Right. If you were morally deficient, you were also mentally deficient. So she went to court to contest being sterilized because she gave birth to this child, right? Yes. She, while she was pregnant, I think. Well, and she went to court to avoid being sterilized because they wanted to sterilize her at that moment. But didn't they, didn't somebody want to use her as a test case for some new sterilization law 
or yeah, Harry some, Laughlin the, did. like the appeal process or something like right. that. What was that about? Well, Harry Laughlin, the the main actor number two that we talked the about, the number two like, guy that's the evangelist like the, type dude. I think he's like the Wozniak. He's the doer. Like, yes, like that's a Davin, good analogy. Davenport's like the visionary, right? Good Davenport's idea. little Jobsian. Yes, and he has the idea, right? Yeah, Laughlin made the shit happen. Like he really carried out. He was the executive branch pretty much at that point, right? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's what he did. Um, so he wanted sterilization laws. So there weren't any laws in place for sterilization. But he's like, we need to do this because if we can sterilize X amount of people, you know, we have a better America. We can save America. So what, what he wanted to do is have this court case get all the way to the Supreme Court. So Laughlin gets... A lawyer to represent this Carrie Buck woman. Young lady. Young lady, Carrie Buck, um, gets a eugenics favorable attorney so that she keeps losing and they keep appealing. So he doesn't help her in any way. He's just trying to move the court case up through to the Supreme Court so they can set a precedence for sterilization. Right? That's where we're at. That's some messed up stuff, man. Isn't that basically what happened? That is very accurately what happened. Okay, so it got up to the county, then the state Supreme Court, then the Supreme Court. So SCOTUS, they upheld the sterilization law as constitutional. So now that gave them pretty much like free reign. What did... Now how the fuck... Is sterilization constitutional? Wouldn't that be a an a uh, infringement on your personal right, like your, your personal right to pursue person? happiness? Yes, right. Where is a mental, where's feeble mindedness or mental deficiency or moral deficiency defined in the Constitution? But it's also, it's all about civil, individual, human, inalienable human rights. But you're also talking about this was a hundred years ago. What was the, what was the mental right? The what makeup, was it like then? What was the makeup right. of SCOTUS? What also, was the culture of the country? Yeah, but the they talked about the head of the Supreme Court was an eighty six year old Oliver Wendell Holmes. Yes, who's so, famous, right? So he was eighty six years old at the time. He looked really good for. I was like, damn, dude, he looked great. <laughs> um, but he was the most widely respected legal mind in the country at the time. What what did they say about him and and this case specifically? Do you recall? He he just read the ruling okay. and he wrote this whole thing and I didn't take it down because it was just like overwhelming. Okay. But I don't I don't, I don't want to spoil everything about this documentary because it's worth it was watching. Very interesting I mean we're talking that, about it pretty in depth, but it's well, worth it's fucking watching. too late now. Yeah. <laughs> just saying we gotta watch. People gotta watch. Anyway, <laughs> so what were you saying? Yeah, he read the ruling. Yeah, okay. I just thought it was if in 1920, 1930, whenever this happened, this would have been yeah, probably late 20s or early 30s. So then. you're talking 90 years ago. The 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 and obviously the the Supreme Court they showed these dudes. It was seven old white guys. They there was not one guy oh, under yeah. under the age of 65. Oh yeah, they were so crusty those old white dudes, dudes were all born around the Civil War. I mean, these guys, these were old dudes. And I feel like that, the conservative mindset in that case, if, you know, older is more conservative, you would guess, and it's an older, it's a younger country, so it's probably still more conservative than just liberal. In this way, right? Conservative thought. Like, anyway, um, they'd be like, that's not constitutional to take away someone's rights. Like, I would just feel like that would be the, that's the right call, isn't it? Well, like, what's the defense for you're talking about taking away their ability to have children. Now, birth isn't a right protected. Children well, isn't a wait, right wait, protected but by is the it, what Constitution. They, what they have to determine is, was the state in the right to pass oh, that law? Oh, that's a good point. Too. So and there was yeah. 26 states at the time sure. of the 48 that had a law like this not exactly the same yeah. but like this right yeah I think it was okay 27, so if you're I'm not i'm trying to be objective right. here the, so the supreme court has to determine is the law constitutional does the law 
not is it constitutional does it have a conflict with the constitution you're so right? smart yeah, i think I, well no, i know this i'm is, smart but you're welcome no, this is why you this is why you're a genius because you put the light bulb on for me and so light bulb you did the the little the little chain this guy yeah oh. the chain thing and then we let it go it bounces around a little bit alexa turn the lights like, on catches like ties up into a knot then sometimes you have to undo isn't that isn't that thing. the worst that's bro? the worst one that um so the light bulb is uh yes the state had a sterilization law virginia it was unconstitutional for the federal government to get involved probably because it's not it's in the constitution law. and anything basically it says anything not explicitly written in the constitution yeah is up for the state to decide yeah sterilization was not in the constitution in any way right therefore they couldn't interfere that's probably the ruling that they made you and i definitely see that sterilization is an infringement on someone's right. human rights but it's whether the constitution has a right to get in the way of them is there a conflict law? with that right. law directly with the constitution right. and it i believe yes. is what they have to and right. we could look it up and you know you can look up every single supreme court case ever right. and go oh this is what you know they have to be very specific like they're they're the fucking judge dude like that's their job they yeah. they have to read it literally letter of the law right, right. quote unquote yes well the thing is yes there was a supreme court ruling recently about the election mm -hmm. and it was thrown out not because there wasn't evidence or not they didn't even look at it because the state one of the states sued and it wasn't that state's right to sue for that another state yeah that's not even state for that like the supreme court right. never like, even look right. at that it was not it wasn't right. it wasn't within their rights and this sounds like this is probably where it went thank you for giving that to me because i was totally locked into whether like your individual rights, it's a right that wasn't explicitly written in the yeah, Constitution. Yeah, I, I highly doubt that the idea. Constitution ever thought about sterilization. No, probably not. I mean, it would make, I don't think back then it, it was called a gunshot wound or gangrene or some shit. Yes, gangrene. But, um, 19th Commandment. So Oliver gangrene. Wendell Holmes read this. And then, so right there, there were 6,000 sterilizations prior to the ruling. And that was... Um, and then it rose to more than double in the six years following across that. those 26 states yeah which is just crazy and then and then it said then i have the next note is i have fall 1926 so this may have been this 25, may have been 24, 25 yeah yeah because yeah. they are pretty good chronological on this one. yeah they and i did. they started with the last thing and the first thing but yeah i agree anyway um so what would you get after that this Mueller guy uh the Mueller dude uh at the university of texas at austin was one of the flyboys he moved from the previous university, still doing fly shit. He couldn't do, he couldn't figure anything out. He was still using the old methods with the milk cartons and all that shit. He finally decided that he would radiate the flies to see what would happen. And he discovered he could create mutations, which was something that had never been done before. Yeah. So basically he, uh, he ran them under an x-ray or something. To, yeah, I, I assume like it was something it was, like that. I think I yeah. said that. And then, um, so what? basically what that idea that genes were malleable. So he's like, well, this isn't a fixed thing, right? It's not that three in one law. Heredity is not fixed. Yeah. You can make changes, and it kind of reminds me of the Kellogg idea, right? Where your diet can affect your genes as well. It's like a reverse way of thinking, right? Because clean, clean eating, clean life, clean mind. Yeah. Right? Well, heredity is not just as simple as the, the pea plants of Mendel's. It was about some issues with less desirables are social. So they were saying that sometimes these other issues that come in, social issues, environmental, cultural things, can change who you are. So you're saying that hell yeah they can right because it it really is nature and nurture yeah it's this ultimate fight of nature and nurture eugenics is purely nature yes sir take zero account into your starting place in society your your status your parent status your um, all the education nothing so so what happened after that then sir no, the, great the great depression tell depression us tell, I, I give you all the good stuff so tell oh, us oh you can take depression. it if you want no the, please you said you gave me all the good stuff that's that's not good stuff i know that's, that's <laughs> it's bad shit. It's uh the great depression it was it became obvious that 
regardless of your situation, if you are a doctor or a lawyer, you could have been poor real quick because everyone lost their money. You know, the, there was 25% unemployment and it was craziness. So you could, you could have been a farmer or you could have been a doctor and you could be in the same soup line as anybody else. So it was obvious that it wasn't just it, genes. It wasn't it just genes. It wasn't just your awesomeness. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That was huge, right? It, and then they said it's it's society, not the individual, which is the real criminal at which stands to be judged. And eugenics was completely ignorant to social and society issues, which is true because it yeah. did not care about nurture or which is that side, the you know environment. Yeah, whatnot. absolutely true. So that's. So they said eugenics might yet. Oh, yes. Somebody wrote eugenics might yet perfect the human race but only in the society consciously organized for the common good. So is that like Star Trek? Yeah. But the question is this, sir. No, stay, keep it on you, bro. Keep it on you. Bastard. What? What is the common good? That is also, didn't I say that earlier? Like if, if, if one person is, is they're trying to do the most good for the most people, 26% of the people are still going to be pissed. So what's common good, right? You, yeah. You, is common you can, good utilitarian you, where it benefits the most people. We talk about that's this what, all the but time. See, that's what everyone tries to do is like, Hey, if I make this decision, this is going to help the most people or, and, and, or piss off the least amount of people is that that's, that's what you try to, that's what everyone, everyone with the best of intentions is trying to do the most good. Right. right? But if, if we were to look at that once again, I mean, we, we do talk about the conscious good um as yeah as half white as white myself make up the majority of the percentage still of the population in the u.s right so if if something probably would benefit say white people more because that's a larger percentage yeah then it negates the 13 percent african-american community yeah. and then 16% and, and brown. This is where it becomes very nuanced. Yes. Uh, once yeah. again. No, I, I get it, dude. We we talk about this stuff because so it is So a law it can be important. passed and they go, oh, well, the law is passed to favor white people. Well, because the majority of the people are white. So you can, you can judge the wording right. to make it seem bad. Right. But it can. That, but yeah. But also sometimes... Other communities, groups need different things than other groups. Like the needs of New York City oh, yeah. are not the same as the needs of Lincoln, Nebraska. No shit. Right? Like Go Big Red. Right. No offense to Lincoln, Nebraska. No, of course Thank not. Thank you for the three people that live there and the two that listen Go to us. Go Big Red. Go Big Red. Um, corn Oscars, baby. <laughs> um, no, but you understand what I'm saying. Like, it, But it could be detrimental to a percentage of society, like you said cannot please everyone yeah, it's but, impossible but, but this the, and that's the problem that we always run into with social and, and societal issues right so what is consciously the common good yeah, that's obviously yeah. subjective and back then i would guess it, the percentage of white people was higher in the 20s it'd have to be right well because we've yeah, had influx uh, and then pop and then reproduction i would think so yeah yeah so it probably was even more percentage. detrimental to yeah. a to the Minority community percentage wise, I want to say, I don't know because no one's minority, you know, in that way to me, like everyone's equal, right? That's where we want that equality. Of for course. Everyone, yeah. At least yeah. for the opportunity for sure. Yeah. So it makes it, it makes it tough. It makes it tough, tough situation with the common good is kind of thing, you know, just stuff we try to always think about. I love, I love the thought experiments we have. Totally dude. Okay. okay dude. There's your turn. Okay. The next point. Yes. It's a good one. I'm gonna give it to you, okay? Go. Oh, <laughs> July, 1933. Bum bum bum. Oh, there you go. Hitler comes to power. <laughs> he immediately enshrines eugenics in state policy. Created a law that mandated mandated sterilization of citizens who had any one of nine. Presumably, presumably, presumably heritable conditions, presumably inheritable, like, heritable, right. Or just heritable means it can be passed on. Okay. Yeah. 
in or her. not. Yes. Yeah. In, out, on, under, <laughs> around, through, around, uh, to, over. I love you. Man. All the conditions. <laughs> all nine of the conditions. So, and some of them were like alcoholism and some other shit. Yeah. Like, so none of, they were questionable. <laughs> I mean. They I they were, didn't list them and I wish they would have. Right. I saw six. I, I read I, something I on the screen where they had it like on the newsprint. Was it in German? No, no, it, it said alcoholism and it said feeble mind. I think there were like, there were nine anyway, they're on there, or six. And I'm like, well, that's not nine. So I didn't take that as the direct ones that they were calling unless they broke them down into different categories of each one. But regardless, it was nine presumably heritable conditions, meaning that they could get them from their offspring or give it to their offspring, right? Yes. So it was based on a model law written by, bum, 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 this her. Take it from here. Mr. Laughlin, the Steve Wozniacki guy. What's his name? Steve what? No, it's Steve Jobs. And, uh, oh, what? Was not, that is Bruce, Steve Wo- is it the two Steves? I think it's the two Steves. It's Steve Wozniacki. Wozniacki. <laughs> Wozniacki. Uh, Wozniak. Woz- yes, Woz. Wozniak. Yes, Woz. You screwed me up, bro. Sorry, bro. You got me screwed up with Brian Bosworth. Oh, And then shit. I started thinking about Bo Jackson. What? And him running over him. Oh, it's terrible. Man. Seahawks. Uh, so the law, the sterilization law that uh, Mr. Laughlin wrote is the Nazis basically copied it. Not word for word, obviously one's in German, but it's not identical, but it's very similar. And Laughlin was, he felt honored that they did that. And he had correspondence with Germans, German scientists. Yes, which obviously was disturbing. But at the time, they didn't. He, the American they didn't evade Poland yet, right? They didn't know where <laughs> it was going, right? Right. They like, For oh, sure. they're trying to make a, they're trying to make a better country, cool. But uh, <laughs> they also, you know, have they're having some problems. So uh, during um, was it Hitler's imprisonment in World War One? Is that correct? He read. The Passing of the Great Race, which was Mr. Grant's book about the Nordic race. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Grant was the uh, older white dude that his ancestors signed the Declaration of Independence. And didn't, what was it, what, what point did I miss? He wrote him a fan letter. He wrote him a fan that, that was it. So Hitler wrote Madison Grant, an American rich guy, a fan letter. That's crazy. After then, reading his book. Hitler writes Mein Kampf and basically which is his autobiography his autobiography and he states that which I believe you already stated yeah that th- th- the Germans should be doing what the Americans are doing in the vein of eugenics Germans must emulate what the Americans are doing Hitler's words and we were the good guys just, just, just very, it's kind of. Uh, would you say that's Alanis Morissettean? <laughs> <laughs> I do need a knife right now. Uh, spork, bro. That's just crazy. The the Nazis sterilized four hundred thousand of their own people. That's that's. Uh, <sighs> I've, it's fun. actually worse than that. Of course it is, but that's what they said on the show. No fewer than. Well, let's just. Well, think about what no fewer than means. It could be a million. It, of course, but. I'm just saying. I know, dude. That that no fewer than chain could be a big number. Yeah. And that's just, I mean, like 400 <laughs> isn't enough. 400,000 right. isn't yeah. enough. 25 times the number that we had at that time. Yeah, right. So they see Germans do everything better. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I, I better or we're just more efficient. I would say more extreme. Yeah, no you shit. know they don't fuck around. <laughs> we do not. Deutschmark does not fuck around with these things. We are very. We take our eugenics very seriously. We we are very serious about our eugenics programs. And how many um, uh, we shall sterilize? No fewer than 400,000. It's a lot of motherfucking people. I know. It's ridiculous. I mean, and like, 
No, I can't say stuff like that because I okay. sound like a dick. Next. Yeah, go. You're up. No, I just talked. You did? Yeah. Damn it. So not silly law. Yes. Tell us about it. Uh, it applied to everyone, whether you were institutionalized or whether you, you know you were in jail or you were in an asylum or you were a dude working out at the corner store selling oranges. That but, sh- didn't matter. That's how you get 400,000 plus. Right. It's like, damn, that's messed up. And then- I could, you know, I could see how it led right into the hatred of Jews and just like, it's just that bulldozer effect is almost, how do you, it's kind of like what we said before, once it's, once it stops, you can't, once it starts, you can't stop it. It becomes its own animal in a, in a way. And maybe I'm not being articulate enough in what I'm trying to say. You're doing very well. Oh, thank you so much. Sir. What are you looking up, bro? I was actually looking up Yes. Um the pop German population in nineteen thirty six. Sure. Whatever it like yeah. Um 34. but I can't find the exact population. But I'm just wondering what four hundred thousand is. Like obviously their population is less than ours was. Remember we had they want to do fifteen million Americans. Yeah. And it was 97 million Americans. 16%. So, 16%. Right. So they had less than, obviously they had less than 97 million Germans at the time. Because yeah. I think there's only like 80 million now. So I'd have to look at what that population was. If that makes sense. Yeah, I got you. In 39, it was 86 million, but that's wrong because that was all included territories they took Poland over. Poland and so France, Belgium. Poland, and, everything. Yeah, right. All parts of Africa and all that at Jesus, that time. Dude. Like, so... Obviously, that's not the correct number, but it looks like 1934. Oh, hmm, 66 million, 409,000. So 66 million at the time. Maybe that, maybe that was correct. But I mean, I'm just saying, 400,000 people sterilized. Yikes! And like, it didn't matter. Like to your point, whether you're institutionalized or not, or whether you you didn't. I don't know what kind of tests they had. Like how the. like it was just those nine traits, right? And and is that be, it, it, was it like, oh hey, John down at the corner store? Yeah, he's uh, trait number eight. Get John now! Like was it that simple? They just believe somebody? Oh yeah, he's feeble minded because uh, he forgets shit. What? Like it? Is that what happened? And then they used meth to yes. do Blitzkrieg, <laughs> like. Hello. Can we survive I'm sorry. So, the blitzkrieg? So this supposedly rooted out alcoholism. So were a lot a number of their soldiers sterilized? They probably must have been. Well, they didn't they didn't care if the soldiers were sterilized, they just needed bodies. No, no, what I'm saying is like Yes, I think they would have been sterilized. They would have probably had vasectomies or something at that yes, point. Yes, they had no they had no tubes, bro. Like a lot of them, just because like they were fucking drug addicts at that point. Because they were using that Pervacel shit to Pervacel. Uh, some it was some over the counter fucking meth that they were taking. Yes, it was crazy. And you know they've talked about Hitler and Does his Pervacel some addictions he cause may have had. anal leakage and dry earlobes, ashy skin. That's the worst. It's the worst. Um, yeah. So in Mein Kampf, he writes uh, Mein Kampf. So they sterilized four hundred thousand plus, uh, and then it drew attention in America because twenty seven of forty eight states had laws about sterilizing the feeble minded. So 27 of 48 states had laws that the Germans were executing to perfection or to really damn near perfection, which in this case, perfection is bad. Well, yeah. And, 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 and we're, that just shows the United States is no, is no better. You know, you know, in the United States, in the Western hemisphere and, and well, in, and in Western Europe, Germany is painted as an evil, evil empire, right? But the United States, half the goddamn country, it has the same law. There's, we're no better than they are. That's fucked up. Yeah. And not only that is a law that was here was a blueprint for theirs. Yeah. And it was beyond just us doing it ourselves. Like we, they modeled theirs after us. That's how yes. much they respect how good we did it. How good the law was. That's how was. good we did bad things. <laughs> they just took the law well and they it executed it better, to your point. Right. They just perfected it. I yeah. Guess. They made yeah. a better wheel or something. So <laughs> 1930s was the peak of eugenic sterilization. Money played a huge part in the 30s. And then this movie, uh, Tomorrow's Children, 
in 1934. Wasn't something about her parents being like alcoholics or whatever. And it turns out she was adopted the whole time. So she wasn't I even part of, part. she wasn't even the part of, she wasn't even part of the family in the first place, like genetically. Yeah. I didn't remember so, that part. Anyway, How did I miss that? I don't know, but that That's was, weird. so that was the other part. And then they had the Americans were enthralled by the case of Ann Cooper Hewitt, right? Which Once is again. how the whole thing started. And that's how the whole thing started. Let's refresh me us on that, sir. Get, uh, bring us up to speed. What's Ann up? Hewitt, Ann Cooper Hewitt was the socialite, young 30 something girl that her mother sterilized without her authorization. And then she sued uh, the two, her mom and the two doctors. And the case in Frisco against the doctors was thrown out of court since there was a law on the books in California that sterilization was legal. And then by the end of the 30s, more than 30,000 Americans were sterilized nationwide. And then this is where it really turned, right? Because Nazi Germany took eugenics from sterilization to extermination. And then they showed all the Jews in the concentration camps and the stuff that just... The bad, bad, bad stuff. It's really tough to watch every time. It's like you know, all those images are just un, unbelievable. That how, how that we're capable of that, but we are the human but, race. But we are. Oh yeah, like, and it's crazy to even think that because it just anyway. It was a huge black eye for eugenics, right? It was an embarrassment because basically they're like, not only do we, you know, are we sterilizing the lessers from breeding? We're going to get rid of the ones that are lessers. Like, well, in their opinion, that, was right, the in, right. But I'm saying that's getting rid of anyone is really scary at that point when you start eliminating people. Yeah, because you're like, who? Where do you stop? Who's next? Right. It reminds me of the French Revolution where everyone's being convicted in like of whatever treason, making shit up. The, right, where the guillot Bastille, whatever the guillotine. There, everyone got the guillotine. <laughs> Everyone's fucking getting killed. Like the guy who rescued the people and just became their leader then gets whatever for you know for monarchyism or whatever off with his head right crazy shit so local anyway um then it was a black eye right so yeah and then holocaust was eugenics to the highest extreme and then by the end of the 70s american sterilization exceeded sixty thousand. i think to the the point of that is that in the 1970s there were still sterilization laws on the books in the united states of america uh, disco, bell bottoms, big cars, and sterilization. Jimmy Carter and sterilization. Yeah, gas lines. Gas lines. Inflation, bro. And 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 sterilization. <laughs> Are you serious? So Crazy. these laws passed in the twenties, stayed in the books for fifty years, and in the nineteen seventies, people thought it was still okay. I was alive, and people thought it was still okay. That's that's I I I I find that just not i find it shocking utterly completely shocking especially in america especially i mean and i th i don't know how well intended they these ideas were i feel like in the beginning the the intentions were really good but yeah the original idea when you but when you you and i do the look ahead thing when you look down the road doesn't it inevitably come to this conclusion where that means you're getting rid of some people <laughs> like because you're either breeding them out or you're fucking eliminating them yeah like that's clearly seen right away in my opinion right yeah so eugenics this was sterilization so they bred right and yes the chances are higher to pass on good genes or pass on dominant genes, correct? And lower with lesser genes. So if you have pair of dominant genes, they carry on. Lesser gene, generally, the, the what's that called? The, not the submissive gene, the... Um, dominant and pass, pass, no. Shit. The other regressive. one. Regressive. Regressive no, gene. Sure. No? Regressive not dominant, gene. I regressive. Think, I think yes, it's reg regressive Regressive, gene. you're correct. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, the regressive gene... Then doesn't right, but to the point, the fruit fly point, it's not exact, right? But now we are in this world of technology where we talk about Gattaca. <laughs> we could talk about cool movie, bro. <laughs> Tell us about Gattaca. What's Gattaca I about? I don't, it's got Ethan, what's his name in it? And that's, Hawk. and I remember there's a spaceship and Uma Thurman, and Uma Thurman. That's all I remember. 
I don't remember. And, and, Jude and Law. They, and they were trying to have a baby, but the baby is not genetically this or that. And they had to like do fake blood tests and shit. I don't, I don't remember it. That's all. I don't remember shit, dude. Oh. Okay. So I need to see it again. Yes. Basically it's the future. You can, um, make your children better through genetic, like gene splicing and all this weird shit. But didn't he not qualify for it or something? Right. He wanted, well, he was going to be in the military or he wanted to be an astronaut, but he had a heart murmur. He, so he wasn't hundred percent healthy and they found that early on in his life. So he's never allowed. Oh. Meanwhile, his brother was like the fastest, and oh. the whatever. So okay. he's genetically superior, but this heart murmur made him insufficient. But Jude law was a guy who was genetically superior and he was like an athlete, like a gold medal gymnast or some, or whatever, some sport, but he broke, he got in a car accident or something and he couldn't walk anymore. So he acted like the other guy. So he po- he imp- he was an imposter. So he so Ethan Hawke posed as Jude Law. So he used all his identification with his face and stuff, so he could li- so he could become an astronaut and go out in outer space. Okay. And then they you know there's a whole twist and turn, blah blah blah. So like he has to be very careful because they check for genetic material all the time. Genetic so can, material, bro. They, like and I think they catch an eyelash or something. <gasps> Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. You know, sip of water. Uh, now that you gave me a summary of the movie, I'm not going to watch it. Thank you should you. watch it. It's totally worth watching. No. Okay. That's but, all my notes, sir. Yeah, that's all we're talking about. So, the, But this is where eugenics now, we extend it. It's no longer about sterilization to the point of this CRISPR stuff, right? We can actually modify genetic makeup and put it into a child. That's disturbing. I, I no. No. That's just I, no no. We talked about it, right? The Chinese twins. They took out a gene that was that's linked to getting HIV. So they took genetic they genetically took that out of their genetic sequence, whatever that what whatever it was. Yeah. And the side effect was increased memory and intelligence or something. This, this, th- that was a side effect. Oh, right. That was a side effect. But it, the intention was to not get HIV because it can't attach to that genome or whatever sequence, genetic sequence. But the side effect was an increased intelligence and memory. And the guy did it, and he made babies out of it. Like, that's, like, what... <laughs> Where then, you know, then it really becomes financial, right? If I can afford this enhancement, if I can afford to get my blood filtered or my egg, you know. Harvested. Yeah. And, and get this added and this removed and whatnot. It then even becomes more of a separation of class, right? Class and social structure. Because people, the haves can do it. So they'll do it and they'll get even better, right? Yeah, I see your point. And the have nots are stagnant. So what well, kind of, that yeah, I, I see how you would say it's just genetics at a in a different way. I, you know, yeah, I I I, I get it. Right, because it really it is about perfecting humanity or w- yeah. making better people. Right. Yeah. So you know, not being able to get HIV is a healthier baby. Yeah. Yeah, and the side effect of memory and intelligence is great. It's actually a really positive side effect. However, what if no one else does that? to their society. Right. And then these people have 10% better cognitive ability. 10% is a huge chunk. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Like just, just able to multitask or some weird added thing that they have. Right. Memory is a good one because memory is very important for a lot of things. And then, you know, they're better. So like, well, Hey, let's do more of that. Cause that was good. But what are the really ramifications in that? Right. Once again, it's going to separate, groups even more in an extreme way and quickly exponentially yeah because it's going to happen i think it's going to happen faster yeah like eugenics took 30 years this is through this is through generation they can do this in one egg they can they can make all the added and this will happen like in a year Right. You know what I mean? Like well, the baby the birth. Of, right. Yeah, it's exactly. Nine so a year where yeah. eugenics previously took 30 years. Right. So, or, or multiple generations. Yes, 60, correct. 80, 100 years. Well, yeah, but you know what I mean? Like, 
Right, but you had, you know, you're trying to keep breeding the way you want to breed. Yeah, right? that's some scary shit, dude. That's really fucking weird. It's crazy. Yeah. All right. Well, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> what does everybody think? Yeah, tell us. Watch the documentary on PBS. Very good. We'll yeah, put the American link. We'll Experience, put the link on it. Eugenics Crusade. Season I 30. had no idea about it. It was super interesting. Episode 11. It's worth a watch. And uh, we all try to be better, right? But at what point is it not? A, is the cost too much? And then uh, Beer Google, uh, Famous People, and Eugenics, and see what names pop up next to them. That's a good, I like that's a good, that's a good Beer Google that's search. That's really scary. Okay, great. I'm not going to say order. Oh, I yeah, I forgot people. about that person. Yeah, I, yeah. I dox people. Right, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so just do that. I'd be like, famous people who believe in eugenics nowadays. Eugenics supporters? Yes. Pro -eugenics, not athletic but, supporters. But not not actually not publicly like, pu publicly announced, but behind the scenes. Right. Are correlated to, linked to. Just be interesting. Fun little watch. Yeah. So that has been eugenics in me. And you. I am eugenics liver. All of us. Thank you so much for Tyler listening. Tyler Durgan. Um, yes. Tyler. I am Jack Spleen. Right. But uh, any closing arguments, sir, or closing statements possibly? The Not, only one arguments. I have left is uh, be excellent to each other. Party on, dudes. <laughs>